Welcome to this week's episode of the Beyond an MSS podcast, everybody. I'm one of your hosts, Mayor Reynolds. Uh, I'm the other host. I'm Jadai. <laughs> Reading Maz is like, I don't know what he's saying. Can, some, can somebody please confirm that you can hear both of us? Because I always forget to double check that audio. Uh, I saw someone that looked like Jadai earlier today when I went to... <laughs> you got a sidekick at Jiffy Loop, Jadai? You know, I, I don't like to think I'm the most obvious person in public, but I do think I, I have like a lot of doppelgangers out there, to be honest, especially on Hot Topic. You got a, well, <laughs> you got a pretty <laughs> unique look going. I mean, there's not a lot of guys with ponytails like straight up. I mean, that kind of limits it right there. You know, who's yeah. got a ponytail? Huh? Well, it's not a ponytail. It's more of a bun, Aaron Yeager. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Like, there's not a lot of Aaron Yeager like lookalikes walking around. But, oh, uh, hold on, my. My that's on, that that's on the agenda, in actually, in, in one way. That's on the agenda. Hold on one second. Did I just get over here? Uh, Good. You got your go. you got your glory shot there. Yeah, I okay. can't like see like third like twenty percent of my screen with this thing in the way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so All right, we, yeah, but hey, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> So we missed last like week's episode. Weeks. Yeah, we yeah. we missed last week's episode because we had like a massive power outage at my. We actually were out of. We didn't have power for like twelve hours. It was crazy. Um. So anyway, we're here and we're ready to go. So yeah, we're gonna start right off with uh this week's episode of unsolved mysteries in gaming. I guess we're gonna call it. Uh. Dr. Disrespect, I know you've you've read this or seen this, at least, Jedi. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very appropriate response. Uh, Dr. Disrespect tweeted an image last towards the tail end of last week, and it basically read uh, in as if it was written by his lawyer. I have I have or somebody's lawyer. I have resolved my dispute with Twitch. Neither party admits to any wrongdoing. That was it. That was the entire statement signed. Dr. Disrespect on Dr. Disrespect letterhead, which I thought was hilarious, with he had his logo like this. Yeah, his logo <laughs> on and it, I, it I really, looked like a wedding invitation. First, first things first. Do you think he had that made up just for this, or do you think he has had that yes. that uh, letterhead actually in existence before that? No, no, there's no way that that letterhead exact actually works as any kind of like legal documentation or any kind of like <laughs> representation. Uh, okay, so. Um, let, let's take it from there. We we have found out nothing else, nothing else, no reason for the ban. Still, um, what? Do you, how do you think this went down? Like, how do you? Because we we literally know nothing. There was never any actual court papers, public court papers filed. So, what do you think? What's the jade eye like? Peel back the curtain on this situation. I think that there's like probably some like stuff stuff going on behind the scenes that doc was doing wrong and that someone at twitch was doing wrong at the same time i'm pretty sure both parties are at fault which is why they don't want to admit who was most at fault <laughs> and then like i'm pretty sure doc was probably willing to go down with a sinking ship and just suing and he probably odds were in his favor but probably looked like the new um you know gaming studio and reputation that he needs to uphold for that gaming studio mm -hmm. Um, with Midnight Society, I I'd imagine that he's probably just not interested in like taking down that going down with the ship anymore. He probably yeah. needs that value, especially whenever the game launches, because that was like a big question I had. Is like, well, are you gonna stream on the Purple Snakes channel or yeah. is it just gonna be a YouTube exclusive? Because there's no way you could just stick with YouTube and your game be successful. Uh well yeah, I mean the game would be allowed there. Just any <laughs> type of doc representation. Well, that's not totally true. Because Rogue Company has an entire Doctor Disrespect map and skin in the game. Um, mm -hmm. Other people have, you know, his songs are DCMA free, which is funny and can be played on Twitch uh, because they're no longer copyrighted, which is uh, hilarious. But I still think I don't I don't think we'll I guess what does blow my mind is that nobody, not even like a former employee of Twitch or something like that, ha has leaked like any of this. And it, there's been a lot of like prominent people at Twitch who have left over the past year. I think I read that like six of their top seven executives have resigned in the in the past year, and th mm -hmm. uh, three hundred or so employees. And it just boggles my mind that somebody somewhere who knows something like hasn't even under an alias, you know, like t 
put something on Reddit with some form of proof or, you know, like, I don't know. Like, there's literally nothing. There's nothing to go by in this, which blows my mind. It's got to be so, like, detrimental to, like, how, like, Twitch handles all of its other, like, partners and stuff like that. Because, like, for them to be that hush about it, I got to imagine that, like, they were probably doing something with Doc that just wasn't a good look. Yeah, so, that's, like, yeah, that's the thing. And like, you haven't heard it a lot lately, but when it first happened, it, it really seemed like a lot of the prominent Twitch partners were very much like, like on ice about it because they're like, wow, like that could happen. This could happen to me. Like what happened? Like it, it didn't build any trust, I don't think, with with Twitch and their partners. And then interestingly enough, a lot of their partners, prominent partners have all signed with YouTube Gaming uh since since this happened so I, you have to wonder how much of that was like oh my god they just like took doc and they deleted him like straight up like literally hit the delete mm -hmm. button like done um uh, i don't know what do you think do you think we'll ever find out anything ever oh i, I think we will eventually yeah. like there's got to be some like lift of that eventually whenever doc is maybe uh, 20 years, years younger old. in the near yeah. future or something like that yeah. like, kind of really like reverses age um but no i'm pretty sure something will really come to light to be honest i don't think it would be that hush for too long um i don't know if it'd be like within the next like few years though probably I, not i do think you're right that, that the midnight society thing plays into it because if you've noticed this this week midnight society has been stepping up their their marketing like they're doing like an alternate reality game and like all yeah. this stuff. Okay. And I, I kind of wonder if they're going to start rolling out more. I mean, I still think their game is like years away. I would definitely expect it to be like, I'm thinking like at least three years away. But um, I, I do wonder if that's part of it is if they wanted to. He just wanted to like totally put this behind him and just have no, you know, mm -hmm. nothing. Not let it affect like, the rest of the production and the rest yeah. of the viability of the game. Do you yeah. think? I mean, if that's the case, it's definitely the smart move. Do you think he got anything? Do you think he got any type of settlement, or do you think it was literally just like, "I'm dropping this. I'm done with it. This is going nowhere." It's probably a drop. Yeah. Mm hmm. I don't imagine so. I really the the way it was worded was really interesting to me because it it, it seemed like it had to have been a mutual decision of some kind between both parties because. Yeah. It said neither party admits to any wrongdoing. Like, like, like he didn't have to cover for them. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't have to include mm -hmm. any statement about them about them whatsoever, but he did. So I feel like there was some type of, I don't know. I, I don't he probably know. led with it, probably either because he won that decision to just both parties in agreement, uh, or two, Twitch doesn't want to make any reference or comments to it. Maybe because they're. Um, within their own like internal policy and not supposed to be saying anything they, I, I mean, mean twitch is already are. bad enough at like they, communicating anything else but just literally every every other thing why the, just the doc you know that's what i was gonna say it's like like three times in like the past 12 months they have come out and said from now on we will give a reason every time yeah. somebody is banned like every time yeah. they have said this uh oh here comes Maybe. the claw here comes the claw. uh They've said this like three times, like, you know, from now on, we will always communicate the reason for a ban. And then like, lo and behold, like literally like two weeks later, there's somebody who says like, no, I didn't get told why I was banned. Like their communication is, has been so poor. Uh, yeah. I wonder if it's like because they're too big. Maybe they don't know how to communicate across multiple like partners and influencers. Who knows? Yeah, it's <sighs> it's, it's been a weird thing. But speaking of Twitch. There's been, I just, I just mentioned it, uh, but we can dive into this discussion a little bit more. Um, so over the past year, uh, I don't think it actually was uh, Jedi at the, at the Jiffy Loop, <laughs> Maz. Um, there, there's been like a large exodus from Twitch over the past year. And uh, six out of the seven of their top executives have left. And I, I've, that, their CEO, Emmett Shear, from what I understand, has been a lame duck for like a year. Um, he's like a big tech guy, but he is not like what you would consider like a leader for. Yeah, for for a social facing platform, he is not like the face mm -hmm. of, of a platform type guy. I understand that with all due respect, he really helped build Twitch on the back end, like from the get go. But um, anyway, there's been a large exodus from Twitch. 
Uh, six of the other seven top executives have left, including DJ Wheat, who was kind of the face of the actual team there. And he's kind of made some comments like on his stream since about like how he disagreed with a lot of things going on at Twitch. 300 mm-hmm. or so of their employees have left. What do you think is going on over there? Like I've got I've got my thoughts and stuff, but what do you think the deal is? Like, why are people like it, running why are people leaving (laughs) yeah yeah, i mean people leave every company in fairness but what do you think is responsible for this i mean like i really don't know i mean there's definitely like the the chance that uh amazon could just be scaling down uh with Mm -hmm. the amount of people that they have or maybe those people just aren't happy with the company which is totally possible like people did that with microsoft they've done that with google they've done that with apple um like the, these kinds of things happen for sure where they're just not believing in the product or any of the brand stands for them. um and we obviously know twitch is definitely in that place where its brand is so ambiguous mm-hmm. because it doesn't hold it, it, it doesn't help hold any of its own principles accountable to those who yeah. need to be held accountable um and i can imagine it's stressful I'm pretty sure people don't want to deal with it anymore they don't want to work for a company that does that i mean that's me giving the benefit of the doubt that people are leaving these amazing opportunities at these businesses uh, because they have high values. Maybe it's because no one will tell them why Dr. Disrespect got banned. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Or maybe they're the reason why, because they settle everything. I I really, I, I really do seriously wonder like how that situation went down. Like, like I, I feel like there had to have been people who walked into somebody else's office that day. I mean, like, uh, did you authorize this? Like, like freaking out because they they could <laughs> they couldn't have communicated it like broad scale in advance because word would have got mm-hmm. out. You know what I mean? And yeah. then people would have been like freaking out, like docs people and the lawyers. So like, I don't know who made that decision, but I really wonder like who was in the room when that decision was made and like how fast did it happen? Because I feel like everybody at Twitch must have been like, who works there? Like that office that day must have been like. Oh my God! Like this guy is yeah. like the, one of the biggest creators in the history of the platform. Let me just ban him. Like I don't know. I bet there's a lot of people who weren't for it. I know. Uh, whenever it comes to like uh, internal stuff, when people, whenever a business as big as they are, as a corporation as big as they are, uh, they they do have like open like communication lines for people to just say, "I don't like this. This yeah. is cool move." I remember. Um, like during COVID with Microsoft, we talked about uh, Chris Capicella. He's, uh, I believe, the VP of Microsoft. He made the announcement that we're, they're we're moving from like the work from home model to a hybrid model. And then like everybody on Yammer was like freaking out. They're like, no, we can't go back. COVID's still bad. And it, you know, it was like with a Delta variant, it was like coming around and stuff like that. But like corporations like that, you know, they have, they have open channels for that kind of stuff. And I know Amazon, at least for its, what I will call corporate enterprise like employees. Um, I'm pretty sure that they have different ways of expressing how much their you know, disdain is for a specific thing at their businesses compared to like warehouse workers. Yeah, this is, this has been my theory on what's happening at Twitch. And I think there's a lot of evidence for it in general. It doesn't necessarily apply to this, but I think I think what's happening at Twitch is people are, um, you know, the company was bought by Amazon and I, I don't think Amazon has at all, it, which is weird because it's Amazon, shown a willingness to invest in Twitch and like really make it, you know, like it, it is the leader in the space, but they haven't really shown any willingness to like to no run with the ball, so to speak. You know, like they, they bought oh. the platform and th- they've they've integrated it with Prime, which I think is the main reason that they bought it. Um I think but they bought since, it for scalability. I yeah. think that they just saw the opportunity to like turn an entire like TV infrastructure online yeah. for gaming. Like that's yeah. honestly, I think that's what they did it for too. Um, and but but since then, I I think that they have like you know they they've watched literally. I mean, how many of their top creators just sign with other platforms? And everybody, all those all those um streamers, like they most of them are saying like yeah like just other platforms offered me more money like straight up and mm-hmm. you would think that like the leader in the space would be the one to be able to say hey we can give you more you know what i mean and mm-hmm. they're just not willing to and they a lot of the problems that they've had over the past year to two they haven't really proposed i mean everybody always talks about the lack of discoverability on twitch you know like no discoverability and as a social platform like 
it literally has none um, when you compare it to any other social media platform. And they've yeah. proposed no, like no solution. Like it's 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 almost like it's almost like they bought it. It is what it is, and they're just gonna leave it there, which is weird because you know you would think being a product of Amazon, they would work really harder to fulfill it, it, it as a fully fledged out service and integrate it even more with um, other Amazon services, which is kind of what I'm going to mention next with Luna, ironically. So maybe I'm being uh, <laughs> hypocritical. But um, as we uh, as we talk about how bad their services are on their platform to sell, not sell, but also talk about more of their services and their products that just launched. <laughs> yeah. So Luna officially did launch. I think it was last week. No, the week before. And um, have, have, you haven't used Luna, have you? No, I haven't had much reason to. Yeah, it is. This is one of those things, again, I, I feel like they have the pieces to make it a giant success. And whether they do or don't, I, I think is on them. And judging by how they've treated Twitch, Amazon, I'm not confident they will, but it has it makes so much sense. So games that are on Luna, if you're watching a game on Twitch and it's on Luna, there's literally just a button you can click. And then you're playing it on Luna, like literally 10 seconds mm -hmm. later. Fixer had that also. Did they? Yeah. I didn't even Fixer know that. It. Yeah, it would also take you to the store. And if you bought the game I on did the know store that. as well. Yeah, and it would give like a 5% uh, revenue share to the pe person you're watching. Like that existed. And they did have like a button. I think it was like in the beta trial at the time. But they did have a button where it just launched this game if you wanted to play. And it was there, which was pretty Through, cool. like xCloud, was it? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was through xCloud because at yeah. the time, like, there was no, like, you know, scale. Like, there wasn't a, a way to do that on the platform. Yeah. But, um, but that's pretty cool, though. I mean, like, I think that's really great. Um, does this, like, play any kind of part into, like, Lost Ark and New World? That, those are see, two major games. That's ultimately, if you really play this service out to its fullest potential, I feel like it has massive potential. Like, if, yeah, like, imagine if Luna was there day one for lost ark imagine how much bigger that game even would have would have been it was just it's already massive but imagine when you know when it had a million viewers on twitch if you could literally just click that button and play it on luna in seconds no downloads no installs mm -hmm. i mean that's and then you add twitch drops on top of it uh, and it's just like they really have all the pieces like they just have to actually flesh everything out and market it yeah. I'm pretty um, sure like the marketing thing is like definitely something that they're trying to be strategic about because of like how one Google Stadia worked, right? Or Stadia, yeah. I said Stadia for some reason. Like Stadia like was marketed, but like poorly. Mm -hmm. And like there wasn't really value to the subscription. It was just like I see Luna sign up well, pretty decent, right? I was gonna ask you that. So I like what Luna is doing a lot, a lot more than what Stadia is doing. Because Stadia asks you to buy the games still like you have yeah. to purchase them add them to your library and then you can play it stadia is off or not stadia jesus luna these names are so generic they're like pokemon names i could just interchange them or something um luna is offering just a subscription service which i think is much smarter i think it, it's them if they build a subscription service and compete with game pass and make it through, you know, integrate it with Twitch and all that stuff. I think that's a much better strategy than what Google's doing, which is like, oh, hey, yeah. buy this game for 60 bucks. And you got to, you know, I don't know. For like the subscription at the same time. Yeah. And like the DRM thing was scary as hell, too, whenever it came to Stadia, because it's just like they could just take the game off their system and like yeah. you don't have access to it anymore. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was no example of that happening, but you never know. Like, that's the scary thing. And it's just like, you know, it's already bad enough as it is with like the majority of all of our systems, even on disc. Um, but like at the same time, it's just, dang, dude, am I really going to be able to like hold on to these games that I've purchased so far? Because that's already the problem we have with our physical previous games, Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> and with, I think with a subscription service, like what they're doing with Luna, I think it's much more like, you still you don't want it to happen but everybody understands that the games on subscription services rotate it's just like netflix you know it might be on netflix for six months but you understand that you know it's not going to be there forever i think that's just as yeah. much safer system um i did play like five minutes of devil may cry 5 through luna just to test it out um mm -hmm. and it it works really well you know it's not as as good 
per se as running it natively on a high-end console or PC, but I mean, for, for it's free. You don't even need a subscription to play some of them. You can just mm-hmm. play. There's a rotation of free games. Um, yeah, I see, like, can't Prime members it. get to play Devil May Cry 5 for free. Yeah. If I hit play now, it's, like, just booting up the game right now. That's yeah. pretty, pretty pog. If I'm, uh, yeah. I'm not going to lie, that's dope. Yeah, I mean, I mean imagine telling a kid in, like, 1991 that that would be a thing someday. You know, like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, here it is. It's already loaded up and everything like that. Looks good. Let's let's make a bold prediction. Um, will Google Stadia and Amazon Luna both exist in three years? I think Luna will. I yeah. don't know about Stadia. That's exactly how I feel too. Do you yeah. do you want to say you don't know, or do you want to make a bold prediction and say Stadia will be dead in two thousand twenty five? Hmm. We already know it's gonna be technically dead. They've already they've already shared that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They're transitioning their strategy or whatever they said. Yeah. And I got attacked I mean, I by a Stadia stand exist. on Twitter for like days. Yeah, I think it may be in like the next ten years, Stadia won't be the same service that it was originally supposed to be, but it, yeah. it will still exist in another in another life i really don't know because google most companies i'd say i would totally agree with what you just said like they are not just going to throw the tech out the window you know what i mean they'll they'll use it and let other developers and publishers you know basically lease it from them and whatever else but google microsoft throws away their stuff yeah go and well google does too they they roll out this awesome tech and they're like look what we did oh we threw it in the dumpster out back after we like (laughs) wrote a press release about it you know like that's what they do like they do these amazing things and I feel like they just they decide they don't want to dedicate the resources to like rolling it out as like a national, you know, like actual like fully fledged service or product and they're just like, "Oh, okay. That's out now." Like glad glad y'all thought it was cool. Now <laughs> somebody else can try to recreate it, I guess. Well, let's see. I mean, like it's a shame to see Stadia go down. I was actually really excited about the tech um and it worked really well and it looked like luna looks pretty worked pretty well too it the only thing that now it brings us back sounds like the next one which is uh, x cloud right xbox gaming Cloud services like compared to like that like i think that the accessibility to that is awful actually the um, like booting up a, yeah i think yeah. booting up a game like just the requirement to have a controller to boot it up is a pain in the butt they haven't marketed um, it well but we've discussed that too yeah um and also just like the the game selection is perfect for the value oh you can't beat the game selection yeah yeah can't beat the game somebody did like the math on twitter they said there was like over ten thousand dollars worth of games and stuff and value inside of game pass for just the xbox and like a little over like a little under like nine pc yeah um because there was like i think 50 less titles in there yeah like i was like jesus man dude like it's totally worth it on the game pass it's insane the, like, just the way I just opened up Luna, click through like the notifications, and just hit play on Devil May Cry, and it just immediately yeah, crap. that was much faster than what XCloud has done. So I think Luna so far, in terms of just performance, has been much better. And I, I wonder if that's like a PC related issue or a PC related thing because that's how they use their blades and their and, and their data centers. And then I know Microsoft actually uses custom Xbox One X. Or Xbox Series X blades instead of their mm. servers. I I really wonder. I, I think too that Am- that Luna has huge potential, and I, and I just I do wonder how hard Amazon will go with it because right now, like you know, there's not that many games available on it. I think between like all of the they call them channels, mm-hmm. like the different versions of the subscription services. There's maybe like somebody will probably tell me I'm wrong and be like, "You idiot!" But like you know, 15 or 20 games or something like that. But if they actually like we had this discussion before too like how do you make it how do you drive users to it versus another platform and i think the only way to do that is like i i I don't think they can do exclusive games but even if they did like exclusive access periods on luna for their own games like imagine if lost ark was available on luna luna only for the first week or something like that you know what i mean like i think that's what ea does like with ea EA play i hate it is what's called now (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, yeah, they do do that. Or if you you subscribe to certain tiers, you can get like ten hours of gameplay with this tier and three hours yeah. of gameplay with this tier. God, quit making all these 
horrible suggestions that I know that these I know, companies that's what I just will said. absolutely like, do. I was like, I, I hate, <laughs> now that you brought that up and you're like, oh, that's what EA does, I'm like, oh, yeah, and I hate that. Like, I really hope Amazon doesn't do... Well, if they just did... You got a million-dollar idea, and you ran with it. <laughs> if they did infinite playtime, I'm totally okay with that. I hate when they limit it. Like, oh, you can get 10 hours of gameplay. Like, no, bro, I'm paying your company. Like, you're not going to give me 10 hours. Like, you will yeah. give me as much time I mean, as I want. Oh, EA, EA Play is hella cheap. Like, it's like five bucks for, like, three months, well, that's dude. because like, they it's... haven't published a game worth $5 on it in, like, at least yeah. 10 years. <laughs> Well, I mean, Mass Effect Legendary Edition is on there. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's worth it. I think that's worth it. I think that's worth five dollars. Yeah, I was so excited. I actually never completed it yet. But I've already beat the games. Like that's the, the past, thing. Like, life. I I loved the Mass Effect trilogy. I really, really did. And I did they, beat the Mass Effect remake though. That was great. I loved it. When they did announce it, I was like, I loved them, but I just I don't have I didn't have the desire to do it again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like. I, I think that the remake itself, though, is 100% worth it. I think they did it a fan. I think they did a fantastic job with it. Um, if anything, like going back to like downgrading the Mass Effect 2, and Mass Effect 2 is like one of my favorite games of all time. Like downgrading to that, I'm like, dang, dude, I really wish they did Mass Effect 2 on top of this because they did a very true to heart like port over with like basically like modded additionals um, to make the experience so much cooler. But like i'm like not even barely halfway through mass effect 2 i'm still trying to um recruit i believe jack right now at least on my xbox series x and just it's fun I'm, i already know what's gonna happen though yeah, i know exactly what i'm doing like, i'm playing my same paragon i couldn't do through. it again you know like and i loved it i i still think that they should have done a mass effect mmo instead of anthem but um your dog is like really like the way he's sleeping like <laughs> yeah yeah she's <laughs> She's vibing or right she, now. Yeah, so. sorry. It's okay. She, she doesn't. She's not, you know, I'm gonna reserve that comment. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna let's. I want to transition into a topic that I put later on the agenda right here because we're talking about remakes and we're talking about, uh, you know, all that sorts of stuff. So EA showed a little bit more of the Dead Space remake this week and talked about it. I know that you are in particular a big Dead Space fan. I mm -hmm. was a Dead Space fan. Um, what? I guess I would call myself a fan, but how? What do you, how do you feel about this remake? I guess do you, do you? Because it's a new developer, it's EA Motif, I believe. Because Visceral yeah. is R.I.P. Are you excited? Yeah. Um, are you worried? Oh yeah. What do you think? I'm hella excited. I think that like this will show enough interest that the Dead Space universe can be expanded upon post this remake. Um, and Dead Space One is a cult classic that. A, a lot of people should really get back on board on. Um, the, like I said, the universe has so much possibilities because you've opened up so many doors, especially post mass or mass post Dead Space Three. Um, and Motive seems to be taking the like the best approach right now. Whenever it comes to development, they're actually uh, they have a community of Dead Space fans who get like secret access into the development of this game. Uh, and that community is, you know, given actual hands on with the game, uh, which you don't see with developers like almost ever do. They might have that, but they don't brag about it the same mm -hmm. way they do. The only studio that I know actually has done that was Bungie. And that was like with Halo 2 and Halo 3 um, through the Bungie Vidox. So I'm excited for it. I've seen like a, a, an interesting amount of like frustration with it some people are saying like oh the game already looks great and this remake looks the exact same and it's just like no we'll, we'll get a lot more than just like what we're seeing at, i think like, when at you go time. back to the first dead space you'll notice that it's not yeah and that's it, it. it's an ugly game different. but it, it's people forget how some of those games mm -hmm. that, no it doesn't look the same yeah it does not look the same and like once we kind of like explore how like mood lighting affects like this remake i'm excited for that I think Dead Space has probably the best temperature of any horror game I've ever played. Yeah. The next best one would probably be like Resident Evil Biohazard, actually. That game did a fantastic job with temperature. Yeah. So in comparison between the amount of time we've had since between these those two games I mm -hmm. mentioned, it's just like Dead Space was significantly ahead of its time. And, you know, sucks that Visceral has gone, but uh, the guy who ran this role has his new studio and he's got yeah. that new game that's going to be in the PUBG, Schofield, that's in the PUBG universe. That's, that's that makes no cool. sense. I was excited but... to see that. <laughs> I, 
I, I, well, I will be interested to see what comes out, you know, better, quote unquote, the Callisto Protocol, which is his game, um, or the Dead Space remake. Uh, I, I'm very curious to see what they do with this because do you think that they just kind of like remake the trilogy or do you, or do you think they okay the first one comes out and then they kind of kind of remake the second one but they kind of you know take take some liberties with it and then they go with their third one and they take a lot of liberties with it and kind of like do it their own way or like do they just totally spin it off into their own thing or like i don't know what do you yeah. think I think that they'll I think they'll stay true to the roots. Like the first game is hitting really high notes already, at least with what they're promising. Um, so the fact that they're reaching out to like the community and they're having those discussions and they have had like these dev updates where they will actually talk about yeah. their experiences with the games and what they don't want to do um, versus what they want to do. They don't talk about what they want to do. They talk more about what they don't want to do just to like <laughs> reserve like the 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 trust between them and the player. So they don't um, because, want to like, end the trilogy it, horribly then. <laughs> well, if they do like more remakes, I hope they go with like the traditional we're remaking this. They're doing the same exact principle development to Dead Space 2. We're doing that into Dead Space 3. And who knows? Like I said, this opens up a lot of possibility and doors. Um, you know, it takes a very brave studio like motive. And I'm going to call them brave because it sounds like they're going against the grain in terms of just selling a product. It's to hard a to remake a publisher. classic game for sure. You take a big yeah. risk. I'm pretty sure like EA is looking at Resident Evil 2 remakes or all these Resident Evil remakes. I, and they're like, hey, I, this is doing really well. We could do the same thing. I still think Again. in my mind of the ones that I've played, because I haven't played every remake in the world, obviously. Not, and I'm not counting remasters. I'm counting true remakes, like from remakes, the ground yeah. up remakes. Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3, true remakes from the well, ground up. I, my favorite one was the original uh, Resident Evil remake on GameCube. When they remade the OG Resident Evil from PlayStation 1 on GameCube, um, they they it was Resident Evil, but you know they had Shinji Mikami who created the original and technology had advanced so much and they did add quite a bit like they added like the crimson head zombies which hadn't been in the series before and like like they literally they literally took the game and iterated on it within the same box though and it worked mm -hmm. really really well and uh, the, the remake remake re make uh yeah <laughs> resident evil remake that one uh, for GameCube, I still feel is super underrated. Like the and the graphics hold up really, really well because it's all like hand drawn. Um, you know, like can't and the camp like the fixed camera angles and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I I don't know why that game hasn't really been brought to like more platforms because like every other Resident Evil game has been like pimped out like for, besides Code Veronica. Um, yeah. Like everywhere, I, you know, ported. I really played a lot of Resident Evil, so I, I personally wouldn't know, but. You know, just based off of what I have experienced, Resident Evil like five was technically my first Resident Evil oh, game. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, and I never even like, got into it. I yeah. was like, "This is an interesting looking game," and I was like, eh, "It's not for it's not for me." Um, and then after that, Resident Evil six came out, and I kind of liked that. Although oh, I didn't no. really like the story elements oh, to no. it, to be honest. <laughs> like the multiple character stories and stuff like that, I didn't yeah. like that. Combat was 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 like cool it was very arcadey which is why yeah, i was it. way over the top yeah way over the top super like action-packed cinematic it was nothing it's not like exactly what resident like evil started imagined. yeah yeah i was like this is this doesn't feel like resident evil i was like this feels like the movies and i've seen gameplay of older resident evil titles so this is weird yeah and then obviously we waited so long to finally get you know biohazard and i absolutely loved that game like mm -hmm. i was like holy shift dude like this is this is great. This is I yeah. want. I want more of this. This reminds me of like Dead Space. This You're reminds me seven? of like yeah, that's Resident Evil Seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and then, you know, my hype whenever Resident Evil Eight was announced, Village, I was like, oh god, this is so good. I, Took a little bit of a turn though with the story. I was like, I, yeah, I played Village and I liked it at first, and I was like, this was a smart um, design change, like going to first person and stuff, because it did take it back more towards like the original horror style roots. Mm -hmm. um, it moved it away from action but like in retrospect like i 
don't like it that much and i was like almost had zero interest in village and now i just kind of want them to like go back to the original again <laughs> like i know they've gone back and forth between like the original and then more action and then the original and then you know now we're first person and but like i don't what know what did you like about eight what do you what do you like about it, it was basically is a lot of the flavor like you said like like i don't know we're fighting werewolves now like what the hell is this you know like resident evil to yeah. me is like that classic zombie and there's always been other type of enemies in resident evil like the original resident evil had uh like hunters and um uh, there was things in there that weren't zombies but mm -hmm. i like i don't know with, with village I mean, they're I was not like, even zombies at that they've point, got this to be tall honest. they've got this this tall woman walking around that everybody's fixated with and there's <laughs> werewolves and i was just like i don't know man like it's this isn't what resident evil is to me and i know that yeah. there's like a there's a whole new generation that's playing it and loving it and and that's what it is to them and that's fine because i everybody who i actually knew who played it feel like it's a good game but like for me the old man in me is like back in my day resident evil was shooting zombies and it took you six seconds to turn around 360 degrees and you only had eight bullets for two hours you know <laughs> that's you only had your combat knife and well, you couldn't see around the corners because the camera sucked so bad. I, I will admit, like, the, the whole entire, like, change in, like, how it... How, how Resident Evil Village, like, really took a turn into, like, mythology. It really did. And I think that was the tone that they were going for because we get into this transylvania is esque kind of, like, experience. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole... Like, there's a whole castle there. There's, like, this rundown village with peasants basically living in there um like i liked that like i thought that was so unique and like it, there really were peasants, I, I, bro. Love the, I, mean, I love that there were peasants everywhere oh man look at all this poverty man you were saying got nothing on this one <laughs> uh no but like i i love the the mythology of it i thought that was really cool as far as like lady dimitri's i, I really your hope, dog I is really... like giving you the awkward eye right now it's amazing Oh, she's asleep right now. No, her eye was open a second. Oh, her eye was open. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was um, I was actually probably opposite of you. I was really disappointed that Lady Dimitris wasn't a like a like a key. Like she I was heard people key, say like, that too. Yeah, but, but she, I can they, understand she was, that. Uh, she was like the the face of the well, the entire the, they game. marketed her basically there. as yeah, like the prominent. Yeah, I think it's because like immediately they realized everybody wanted to be stepped on by her, so they're just like, let's run with it, and they just ran. They did more with it. I should have cut her um, for that. But reason. I loved like I loved her arc and her little storyline piece compared to everybody else. Yeah, uh, I love like the fact that there's this lady who like was unable to bear children, and now has children, is living the life of that she's always wanted. And just is so gluttonous, just doesn't want to do anything. The voice else. actress won awards, so I mean, good for her for yeah, taking one. Because that, I mean, that was a role was like what, like she's only in the game for like what two, three hours or something, and she turned yeah, it into something awesome. really strong. Yeah, so. it was great, and I love the sisters. The sisters were great. You know, very, pretty, sad, really, really sad actually that one of those uh, actresses died. That was a uh, blonde one. Um, she she actually passed away uh, during development. Oh, she really? had completed all of her stuff. Yeah, That's she completed crazy. all of her stuff, and then she passed away. That happened um, to um, oh god, what's his name? He played Omar in The Wire, and he he does he voices like a, a battlefield character, and he passed away like right before the game came out too. I forget. I think I forget his name. It definitely several. wasn't the most recent. No, it was twenty forty two. Uh, but, but he's really? been a, he's been in another one too. I can't remember which one it was. It's unfortunate. But. I had no idea that thing. Thanks to so, but I took that speak that out loud. But um, yeah, I mean it's 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 been fun like being a horror fan like, these past few years. It definitely feels like we've needed it for a very long time. With Dead Space, it's I feel like it's the right time for it. I'm pretty. Yeah, sure. I agree. It's so it's so interesting. Like EA was like, we need a Resident Evil competitor, and then you know they came up with Dead Space, um, with Visceral. Visceral came up with Dead Space, and then like you know all these Resident Evil remakes are coming out, and EA is oh, just man. like, hey. Our our Resident Evil thing was is popping, you know. We could bring that back, so I'm I, glad that they're I'm glad they're taking it back. And it seems like even the Capcom team really cares about how they create their remakes. Of this. I know mm -hmm. Resident Evil Three wasn't as hyped as Resident Evil Two. I never actually played it. Uh, I was waiting for it to hit Game Pass. I actually spent money <laughs> on it. Um, but um, yeah, it, it regardless, like they're hitting really great high notes with those games, those remakes. 
I I gotta I didn't put this on the agenda, but I gotta go on this rant because you just it, you just brought it to me. Like needing a Resident Evil competitor and Dead Space and having a good it's a good time to be a horror fan. Capcom last week announced the new game called Exo Primal. I don't know if you saw the trailer for it. Yeah, I so did it is the PlayStation it, show. For those of you who don't know this, <laughs> Capcom made a series called Dino Crisis probably like 20 years ago now. And the first two games were amazing. And I'm a big fan of both of those. And the first two games were horror games. The second game was a little more action-y. Just as great, though. Uh, the third game was terrible. It was an Xbox, original Xbox exclusive game. They put it in space. And that's when we talk, talk about Dead Space. I was like, oh. Uh, which, on paper, doesn't have to be terrible. But it was absolutely terrible. And so now Capcom in 2022... He, after hearing us cry for 20 years asking for a new Dino Crisis game, decides, hey, we're going to make a new dinosaur game, but it's going to be a new IP, and we're going to put mech suits and all sorts of stuff in it. And it, it makes me so angry, not only because we don't get an actual Dino Crisis game, but it's making me take this game, Exo Primal, which by all rights could be good. Like, it looks decent. I'm, I'm not, I have no complaints about Exo Primal's, like, how it looks as a game, but it's making me hate it because all I want it to be is Dino Crisis. And I, I, I just, I don't know what Capcom's doing. And they, they blatantly put, uh, did you play Dino Crisis? Are you familiar with it at all? No, oh, I'm familiar with it. I just never played it. So the main character, Regina, is like a redheaded female with this particular haircut. And they put a redheaded female with that exact same haircut prominently in this Exoprimal trailer, almost as if to like fly it in the face of anybody who ever played or loved Dino Crisis, be like, oh, look, we got your, like, bastardized version of Regina in this game, and uh, there's nothing you can do about it, and we're never actually, like, I can't believe... I, I would have loved to have been in that office, too, at Capcom. Like, somebody had to have been going, like, uh, guys, like, you know, we, we have a dinosaur IP, and, um, you know, like, did, did nobody ask that question? Like, <laughs> I... I I don't know, like, I, I just, that Exo Primal looks fine, it really does, it's four-player co-op, which I love, but it's just like, this isn't what I asked for, you know, it's like, it's like going to the, to a restaurant, and you order something, because you really want it, and then they bring you something else, which you kind of also like, but it's not really what you want, you know, you just really want this other thing, and I don't know. I've learned so much about Mayer's passion about Dino Crisis and the fact <laughs> that Capcom has betrayed his trust yet again with another they title have. that is still not Dino Crisis. And, you know, I, I, I like Resident Evil. I really do. But they're so... They're so... Every year now, we get a Resident Evil game. Like, literally almost every single year. Because we've got remakes and we've got original titles. And, you know, like, that's... You can't take one year off and give us a Dino Crisis, like please, just one. Like that's all I'm asking. Like, and then I'll shut up for twenty more years. Like for real. Like please, just uh. this that that game. Honestly, I mean, like the rest of the presentation was pretty mid for the most part. But oh, it's that terrible. game came up, I was just like, this must be like a Dynasty Warriors like mech suit dinosaur game. So I yeah, was I like, can't tell what the weird. gameplay hook is yet. I can't tell if it's supposed yeah. to be like back for bloodish or if it's like I, I got live Dynasty service Warriors destiny ish vibes. or what? I got Dynasty Warriors vibes. Yeah. Uh, I, you know what else pisses me off? <laughs> I'm never going to stop now. You know what else really chaps my. <laughs> you know what else grabs, grinds my gears? Yeah. Uh, so they've, they've kind of been going in a more. So they took Resident Evil first person. You know, which is fine. So why don't you take, why don't keep Dino Crisis like old school third person survival horror to, to make it, you know, unique. So you're not treading the same territory too much. And uh, there's your freaking Dead Space competitor. Now Capcom needs a Dead Space competitor. So they can make Dino Crisis, you know, third person and uh, use uh, whatever hey, cinematic lighting. Yeah. <laughs> I liked Turok. Oh man, Turok was a good game. Uh, which was the um, original or all of them? Because there's like twenty of them actually. The original, the original, not the other ones. Somebody um, just you know remade I that. I just came up with the, yeah, maybe they don't. The reason they probably don't do anything with dinosaurs is probably because of Jurassic. Park. What do you mean? Maybe Jurassic Park has copyrighted dinosaurs altogether. 
I'm just maybe kidding. but like Chris Pratt is gonna star in the next Dino Crisis game <laughs> and they're waiting for him to have time in his schedule they uh, can't they can't have him compete with Mario that would be that would be colluding well well like he's got probably got to not compete with that with uh Jurassic Park because he's in Jurassic Park as well so they gotta yeah. wait for his Jurassic Park like he's probably got like a 10 <laughs> film Jurassic Park deal everybody hates Chris oh, Pratt man. including myself so I don't hate Chris Pratt I think he's right what's, guy. what's wrong with you He's a stand-up guy. What are you talking about? I don't care what type of guy he is. I hate him. That's why I love him. He's a great guy. And I love him in Parks and Rec. And she's you... my favorite character. What care? In Parks and Rec or? Andy. Yeah, in Parks and Rec. Oh, okay. I was going to say, don't tell me Star-Lord's like your favorite Marvel character or something. Look, okay, hold on. All res- like. You're cutting out. Hold on. I can't hear you. Chris Pratt. I cannot stand like majority of Marvel movies. Oh, shut up. I can't stand like a majority of like. <laughs> Oh, you can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't get now. Oh, okay. I just noticed that I can not hear you. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, like, shut up. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, what what? I hear. <laughs> uh, no, but, like, I actually do not like majority of, like, Marvel movies. I really don't care for them. I think they're pretty cheap movies in general in terms of humor, in terms of writing and stuff like that. But, man, the cheap, this gimmicky, version of marvel movies that i like the most has got to be like guardians of the galaxy i like I the... love that stuff probably because of the entire aesthetic direction of that movie of those movies i i like the first one a lot um by the time the second one came around the second one was okay and then um i liked kurt russell a lot in the second one actually but um mm-hmm. the, I, and i'll watch the third one for sure but i i just i, I felt like um I felt like I got particularly sick of Star Lord in the Avengers movies. That's kind of when I was just like, I, did, yeah. I, I don't know. Like I, like he doesn't belong here. He's just an idiot. And I remember watching like was what was it Infinity War? Was it Infinity Wars or did I see like the meme where pretty much Star Lord is the number one reason why literally everything goes to hell? Yeah, because he punches Thanos in the face. Like the whole world yeah. is is literally about as ending, and he's concerned about his girlfriend and punches Thanos in the yeah. face. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I, I don't care much. Hey. But I think aesthetically, that entire thing has got like the perfect like blend of like. Yeah, James Gunn is really smart. It reminds me of Titan uh, AE. You remember Titan AE? No. So Titan AE was made by Warner Brothers, I believe. And it was a it was an animated uh, movie. And basically, it's about this character who's a human um who whose dad was actually like this crazy like scientist uh yeah holy throwback titan he was awesome and his and basically he had the codes to pretty much bring back the the next earth because earth was completely annihilated and destroyed by like aliens or something like that so i forget it's been so long since i watched it but like every time i like looked at like guardians of the galaxy one and two i just got those vibes like those that grungy kind of like it's space, but it's not perfect. It yeah. reminds me of like Mass Effect 2 in some ways whenever you go to um, Omega. Like, yeah. I love that so much. Yeah. yeah. That's why I love Guardians of the Galaxy so much. And I actually heard that the Guardians of the Galaxy game that came out last year was a lot better than most people um, really would have expected. I heard that the writing was actually really good and it was more yeah, based on the comics than, uh, than the movies. But um, I-, I heard it was pretty good. Yeah, it's on Game Pass too. So There you go. Check Another plug. Another plug. Microsoft really should just stop start paying us. I don't know. You know, they, they should sponsor this podcast you for sure. Phil Spencer and Aaron Greenberg yeah. who are selling Game Pass right yeah. now. They've actually probably sold more Game Pass than like I can even think of. I remember like just being in the stores, just like selling up Game Pass as best as I could, just trying to get like our LTV numbers up all the time. Uh, all right. So uh, transitioning from Guardians of the Galaxy. To the bathroom because I just you gotta go to the my bathroom. Claw. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm putting up a be right back screen. I can't talk to myself for two minutes. Give, give us one second, guys. No, we're not gonna talk about the Adam Project I show. Why? Why we only do? Oh, that's not true. We we do do some movies on this podcast, but um, have you watched it? Has anybody watched it? I heard it's pretty decent, actually. I heard it's Ryan Reynolds. Uh, Best movie in quite a while, which when I watched the trailer, that's what I said too. Like 8 million. Uh, oh no. 
I just got a text message. The heck is this? It's trash. Uh, it's worth it. Clue says it's it's worth it. Daisho says it's trash. You should do a review about it, Daisho. Do it your next video. I'm gonna do. You know what? I'm gonna do this tomorrow on my stream. I'm gonna rank all Ooh, Ryan Reynolds movies tomorrow on stream. Be there at B Square. All right, you ready for this? Yeah. Uh, Overwatch Two. That's our topic. I didn't put up a be right back screen. I just kept talking to chat. Um, so Blizzard seemingly out of the blue, which I was very happy with because they're communicating a lot more these last few months, ironically, since uh, they've been pur purchased hypothetically. Um, well, I hope that whenever you get you know bought out for that amount of money, you can at least tweet once. Yeah, for real. Uh, new Van Wilder win. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Blizzard announced that over the Overwatch 2 beta is coming really, really soon uh, in April. You can sign up for it now. Starts on PC, and then uh, they also announced that they are releasing the PvP and PVE separately, which I feel is a very smart move because I'm guessing mm -hmm. the PvP is essentially uh, done, and the PVE is probably not close to done. I still don't know why they're doing PVE at all, really. But uh, how did you take this news? What do you think of the what do you feel about Overwatch in general right now? Like, what's your pulse? Miss Overwatch. I really do. And I'm just completely bored with the game. If I were to download and play it, I would probably have like a couple of games. Where I'm like, yeah, this was fun. This was very nostalgic. But nothing that's like, I got to come back to it. Um, despite how much content is now back inside of it. Mm -hmm. And now I have games that I actually want to play. Yeah. Uh, not saying that I played Overwatch because I didn't have anything to play. If anything, I built my PC because I wanted to play it Overwatch. It was dominant at its time. Yeah, it really was. And whenever it comes to the news with Overwatch 2, I was like, okay, it's about time. I'm glad to finally see something, and I'm glad that it's coming much sooner than we thought. Uh, they seem to be taking kind of a, an interesting playbook that they did with like the first Overwatch. was kind of like go through a lot of alpha or beta phases mm -hmm. before it actually hits the notch, so... That's really good to see. Uh, I'm glad that that is something that they want to bring back into like their portfolio. Uh, and I really hope that this is actually going to be a good return for Overwatch because I know competitively it's in a, it's a, it's in a really rough spot right now. Yeah. And the drop of 66 to 5v5 is massive. Whether yeah. that's, you know, even at a competitive level from Pro League or even just at like ranked, the fact that there's only one tank per match fascinates me because yeah. I am like super interested to see how the new meta plays out going forward. I'm I'm really psyched. Reworks, reworks across every hero, hero too. Yeah. I'm really interested to see. I'm really psyched too. Um, I, I think I was a big Overwatch fan as well. And I, I, I know there's a lot of people out there, you know, Overwatch is dead, you know, blah, 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 blah. They blew it. They misplayed it. I, I think people forget how much of a, no pun intended, uh, or pun intended, I guess I should say, Titan, because, yeah, Project Titan reference. Um, like it really was when it came out it pretty much blew away the multiplayer market at its time i think it was yeah. like what 2016 or something like that 2015 like 2016 yeah 2015 um, there was nothing like it and that first yeah. year or so especially you know when overwatch league took over overwatch league was the at the time the biggest esports success ever it was the first it, you know we had franchises it really put cities on the map it yeah. built like the best streamers that we know. It built XQC. It no, built no, Tim not Tappy. XQC. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. And you're right. You're right. It Can't built argue. it. You know, it, it created a completely different culture of how we interact with video games and the other people who play them too. It introduced a lot of uh, a lot of interesting things that multiplayer games didn't have at the time too. Like, um, oh gosh, what did what did they they added some like communication tools? Like, did, was there like a communication wheel? Like to like, say certain things out loud? Yeah. I think it was like yeah, the first game to have wheel. that. Um, but anyway, I, I still I, I think, yeah, Overwatch 2, as long as they play their cards right and the game delivers, um, I think it can get get, you know, could be on, mm -hmm. on the top again, so to speak. And um, you may have heard this. They're actually using Overwatch 2 for this season of Overwatch League that starts like this spring. Like, really? So the pros, which I think is really smart, because then you're going to have, have like a locked beta for the pros. I know that much. I think you're good. It's really smart because you're going to have fans coming to watch Overwatch League to get a look at Overwatch 2. And I think mm -hmm. that's just it's just really smart. I, 
I'm I'm excited for it. I yeah. I haven't watched I think as many esports events in any game uh, ever as I did uh, Overwatch League that first season. That was just mm -hmm. really exciting to be part of. I love being at any kind of Overwatch tournament. I was in uh, Dallas when I was living in Dallas last year. I went to the Arlington Esports Stadium and I watched Dallas Viola versus Houston. And like it was just the energy there is so much fun. The casting is on point. It's up there with League of Legends. You've got some mm -hmm. really great talent, both as players and as well as production overall there. And the fans like eat that up. Like I really appreciate how the like Overwatch fans can really come home or come from the other side of the state just to participate and show like you know show how much they support their team and outlaws I, got absolutely swept by the way <laughs> it was I, like that's, a that's what i was just gonna say though is i i do love that there are these franchise cities because it gives you a hometown team to like root for like mm -hmm. like i i think it can be really hard to come into esports like if you're you know if you want to be a football fan or a baseball fan or whatever you know you've mm -hmm. got the, these legacy teams it's really easy to figure out um you know i'm gonna like the cowboys i'm gonna like the lakers i'm gonna like the yankees you know whoever um but but in esports can be really difficult like you come in you're like well who do i root for uh, optic or phase or you know if you're a layman well, they still represent cities as well i mean like in but, well, Call that's, of Duty League, that's what i mean got, but i i like yeah. this because if you're from new york oh, it, it has can to be, be like geographic you're saying it has to be geographically it like, makes it a little easier for people yeah. to get into it i think uh casuals yeah, like oh you know like there's a there's a call of duty team from new york or there's an overwatch mm -hmm. team from houston like that that's cool it gives you an automatic connection if you're from one of those areas for um, sure before, um, before overwatch we didn't have that stuff we didn't have anything like that no we, we, i mean we kind of did i mean like they just weren't super they weren't as franchised obviously yeah call of duty was franchising at the time too but like overwatch really set in stone but like i think that was also a big pressure and a big uh downfall of overwatch league actually like owl is like really great at being able to market their teams because mm -hmm. of like the geographical stuff but you know on the back end of things logistically everything was so expensive it was so much just to like I think it was, get your team involved like I it was like, five, like 10 million dollar entries i i think it, i think that it was i think season two was like at least double or triple that like it was like because really? season one was a big success i think it like more than doubled for season two Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's like why we started to finally see like Activision kind of start to show its true colors, you know, because Activision was very lucrative in this business where they're finally franchising because now they had Overwatch uh, franchising and they obviously doubled down years later whenever Modern Warfare came out and the entire league changed completely. Mm -hmm. So I really hope that like with this acquisition for Microsoft, Activision can kind of humble themselves and be a little bit more open to like mm -hmm. the, the competitiveness. I remember like during Overwatch days, they were, like Blizzard was extremely strict on how their game was handled. They didn't yeah. want anybody running any kind of like tournament themselves. They restricted it. If they found out, they would actually, you know, not press legal charges, but they would like, like shut Nintendo, you down. Nintendo basically to, like what Nintendo does. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> they did the they did the Nintendo. Um, so I hope with Overwatch 2, they you know, they they become a little bit more friendlier to community mm -hmm. held events, especially for where I work. You know, I one of my coworkers is a massive Overwatch fan. He plays every day. Like he plays the hell out of this game. He was talking about, you know, wanting to, you know, up hit like switch off support and go back to DPS, like get his you know, stuff up. But he was telling me, he's like, dude, this game has to launch with content. He goes, Overwatch one, understandable, it launched. And it like people wanted more, but like they missed the ball because they took so long. They focused more on OWL than they ever focused yeah. on the actual players playing the game. So he was just like, I hope with Overwatch 2, they could find a good balance between the two. Well, and I think, they... I think at this point, Vision has no choice but to humble themselves. They know yeah. they're not going to be the leader in the esports market now because now you've got so much out there. Yeah. I, I, I believe all of the content of Overwatch 1 is basically being carried over too right like all those maps and stuff i i i would be shocked if they cut any of them like i so i think that helps too it's it's only additions i believe um i i really do hope too and alluding to your your change from six players to five players thing i know that can make some pro teams mad because you know not not just because they practice one way and then it changes that does too but because they have to cut players they they don't like yeah. that but i know i'm as a as a as a player 
I know one and a lot of players, one of their frustrations with Overwatch became as the game evolved that it was like so hard to kill anybody because there was so much damage absorption and so many stuns. And I'm hoping that the, the removal of a tank will kind of help it go back to mm -hmm. being a game where, you know, it's not just about 12 players skating around on top of each other and not really going anywhere. And, and then an alt basically wiping a whole team, you know, yeah. um, but instead actually make it a little more so you can frag a little harder than, than maybe you, you can in the game right For now. Sure. Composition is really important too. Like, whenever it comes to like any other game, like it was really interesting to see even Call of Duty go to like a five v five format, yeah. and now they're back to their four v fours, which is good. Um, but like for a while, it was just so weird seeing like that many players on one team. And to tell a story, you know, some people can probably see that and have an eye better for it because I'm not an Overwatch pro, but like for a player at this point, they could probably see things happen much differently than I can these days. But like, if I'm new to the to the entire franchise and I'm new to the game, you know, and I'm watching the Overwatch League, you know, there's so much crap oh, happening yeah. on the screen. It's just like, what oh, the yeah. hell do you say? Like, League of Legends is already hard enough. I was gonna but say, like, you know, I have tried to get many people into MOBAs before, any of them. It doesn't matter, League of Legends, Dota 2, and they look at it and, and they'll be like, I have they'll give it like literally no like 30 seconds i have no freaking clue what's going on and i'm shutting this off like i'm just yeah like i'll show them like a team fight or something you know from like a pro league and there's just like you know, there's colors all over the screen and things are wild mm -hmm. all over the place that's before you even try to get into itemization and in some of those games yeah. and it's just yeah, like no, you're right and i and you know that's why we love them is because they have so much depth and stuff and the team aspects but at the same time it's well, we really hard to get the, into the skill we also know the skill that it takes to actually play in those like league of legends is by no means an easy game no. like it's so funny whenever i see people like even like at a very basic level they look at elden ring they go i don't really know what the appeal of is uh, just hitting them with the sword and stuff like that yeah. and i'm just like well, you need to play yeah to really understand what exactly you're looking at right now so um and it's just like you know elden ring is a hard game don't get me wrong but like been playing souls games forever now it's just like at this point it's just like it's not that it's hard it's just you've got to learn rhythm you got to understand like, it but yeah you gotta understand it. so it's just like for me i'm watching some stuff and i'm going i'm laughing at like the tiktok memes i'm laughing at everybody else's like twitter posts and stuff like that and then like you i, I take that kind of empathy back into like competitive games and that's mm -hmm. where i understand it and people really don't look at league of legends people look at league of legends or any moba and like they they kind of see what's happening they know who a player is or they know that this is a character and they know how they're moving and stuff like that but they don't understand the the real pressure and skill mm -hmm. that is involved with that uh in doing just very simple things like putting a freaking ward down yeah like something as important as that and it's it's cool to see that overwatch is finally taking a step back to 5v5 instead of just sticking with 66 that means you know, just more clear storytelling. Yeah, I I'm definitely looking forward to it, and I I plan on uh, I plan on streaming it uh, as soon as I can. Basically, I really hope I get in that first wave of the beta. Where are you going to be streaming, Mayor? Twitch.tv slash Mayor Reynolds. There's the plug. <laughs> um, you can follow me on every platform under that name or Mayor Reynolds TV. Uh, switching to one of our favorite subjects. Is it Halo? It's Halo. Uh, <laughs> they announced the contents of Season 2 of Halo Infinite uh, a couple weeks ago. So we're getting two new maps and three new modes. A new battle pass, of course. And, and I just want... What, what's your take on this? Because it's pretty much universally it's underwhelming. agreed. underwhelming. You think so? Oh, 100% underwhelming. Like, they got to deliver Forge. And they were very ambiguous about it. It doesn't sound like Forge is coming. Um, and if it does come, it doesn't sound like it'll be the complete package. Well, um, I've heard the opposite. Yeah, I, I've heard that this this Forge is going to be like... Who knows? We'll see when it comes. But yeah. I've heard that it's going to make the old Forge look like child's play. That's what I've heard. Uh, they they did release some 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 information like you could go straight into like the actual code of the game and like re freaking purpose the entirety of like a specific object or an you item can change the, the weather you know. on the map you can yeah. change like everything and halo 5 I'm, i don't think anyone probably in this chat you know i hope y'all have like their halo 5 has done 
some like a Minecraft level stuff. Yeah, I heard Vice Forge mods. is really good. Halo Five Forge is absolutely bonkers. Um, shout out to Tom French. He was the uh, t- the director for Forge and Halo Five, and now he was in charge of Halo Five multiplayer or Halo Infinite multiplayer. But super awesome like product, um, which is like why it got so much treatment on PC because they knew that the product itself was sellable on it. All on still angry own, so. that Halo Five never came to PC. By the way. Yeah, same. Honestly, like it's so interesting. Like this, the past few months have, have been like a really great bipolar disorder of the Halo community. I know. Because now real. I see everybody just going back to Halo Five. They're talking about how much. I've seen MCC a lot too. I'm yeah. a lot of people play MCC. I yeah, well, I mean, MCC is getting content updates like regularly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's just an infinite amount of content there. I mean, there's yeah. literally. What there's... can you do? Um, so I get it, but infinite like. It was underwhelming. Tac ops. Uh, no one can nobody, nobody really cares about like SWAT. It's SWAT. There's no reason um, that Halo Infinite shouldn't have an LTM every single week. There's really not. It really isn't. I mean, like I think I gave them a little bit more credit than I should have because now I'm at the point where I'm just like, dude, do something already. Like yeah. give me something to play. Give me a reason to play and you know, I we talked about before the chat, like before the stream started, and it's just like this this ranking system is still not even good yeah and i was having a conversation with someone on twitter and she was saying like oh i really like you know playing halo it's just like there's not enough modes and i'm just saying I do too you could yeah no no for sure it, but like comparatively we look at like other games we look at games like League of legends valorant rocket league literally almost all of these games have one mode yeah. ranked I mean, there's more ranked in rocket league but that's you know segueing away from that right most people wouldn't play for 3v3s um it's just you've got so much of these games that are just stuck with just one mode Mm -hmm. and they're doing so good with it and it's because their rank system is viable yeah it's worth playing don't get me wrong those rank systems aren't perfect valorant in particular makes absolutely no sense sometimes (laughs) but like at the same time you know that you're capable of grinding and going as much higher as you can um and halo is just like it's so confusing it doesn't make sense and it's just like why well, am I playing this? It's, I it's, keep getting like more penalized for losing a game that I went positive in than I actually gained going forward for that going stuff positive. Doesn't in. even frustrate me as much so much as anymore. It, it did for a while, but I kind of got used to it and I kind of figured out like the formula a little bit. The part that kills me is just like I I can't at this point I can't get like a fair match, and I don't just mean that against me either. I feel like every match is just is a roll one way or another. I'm like, this game can't put together like like competitive matches. And it's really frustrating because like, you know, like it's it's not as much as it we all really want it to be. If you're rolling somebody and you know, in those games that I had like 30 something kills, you know, my placement matches, like was I really having fun? So okay, yeah. but that's not like uh, you, like you want to be challenged you want it to be competitive that's why you're playing it you know like you don't want to lose definitely yeah. nobody likes to lose but you want it to be like a thrilling experience you know sure. and like I just, it, the game for whatever reason right now it can't put together competitive lobbies that actually seem like competitive they don't seem fair um, and it's a major major problem for a game that is essentially a competitive game I mean I know there's a lot of people too that are criticizing infinite for not having the social modes like rocket race or griff ball or infection. Cause that's what halo is to a lot of people is just screwing around with mm-hmm. your buddies. And, um, you know, it was for me when I was 14 too. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of think this is what we're going to get per season. I kind of think that like, okay, if we get two maps and three modes per season, this really isn't bad. And I think, it, as long as I keep that pace up, in two or three more seasons, the game will really start to come full, full flesh, I guess. But uh, yeah, I don't think right now, I don't think season two is like a mind blowing game changer by by any means. Yeah, um, and, and it's sad. It really is sad. You know, I gave them the benefit of the doubt. Like, we haven't had a like... sniper's LTM yet. I mean, like. Yeah. A rock, a rockets even, only. Anything. Had, swords. Like, the sniper hammers. is also probably like the worst sniper, I think. In any I just mean like anything, though. Like, there's no reason that every week we can't have a shotguns only this week, uh, mm-hmm. rockets only this week, uh, you know, whatever. Skewers only this week. Look. 
it sounds it, it really feels like they're just still holding like a lot back intentionally and their announcements agree. for like season two just are still underwhelming so that just kind of gives me a little less like trust in them that they've actually figured out what they want to do with season two and after this like i, I kind of like again i give them the benefit of the doubt they said we need six more months before we can go into season two and they're like after they haven't committed to it but every other game every season is three months long yeah and it's just like once season two comes out you really got to commit to having season two oh, or season yeah. three totally in, agree three months after like you can't hold I, us back half a year and i and i feel just like to get mediocrity i feel and i feel like one of the things i agree they're they're holding content back and i and i feel like Yes, Halo Infinite is a 10-year game, and it is going to be different than than Halo 3 or Halo 4 or even Halo 5. Like, or, you know, it's it's definitely a different gaming world that we're living in. But I feel like mm-hmm. they keep telling themselves, oh, guys, we got we got 10 years. We got 10 years. Don't hold the hold back that LTM because we got, wow. you know, we got to make content for 10 years. And it's like, well, no, you can't do that. And, and I heard Joe Stadden, who I generally respect very much, and I and I largely um a credit to getting Halo Infinite back on track, but I I heard him answer a question, and it was you know like if you know did you ever discuss delaying Halo Infinite and another year, and and he said no because ultimately we decided or he said yes but ultimately we decided to ship it because you know Halo Infinite is a different style Halo game it's a live service Halo game, and that's not mm-hmm. a bad answer to that question but then I think when you like push that mindset out to the extent that they have it i think they might be sitting there going well guys we got 10 years so you know we can plan out three years of ltms and stuff and spread it out you know and just sprinkle it in there a little bit and it's like well no you Mm -hmm. can't do that because you look at fortnite or you know i think you've cited modern warfare too his games that just have like amazing content pipeline just throwing something at you non-stop and it keeps the players hooked and uh that's that's what it needs that's yeah there's a community it, 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 there that's starving. Yeah, it's starting for content. Like, you know, we're all like right now, peak sh- like stream time is going to be like a little under like 3K viewership yeah. on Twitch. Um, and like, you know, clearly and we don't 1, use 1,000 of like, them are sniped down. Yeah, pretty much. And I feel bad for that guy. He like quit an entire like pro league with Apex. Well, placing he's, like top he's competing three. in Apex again. He, he's he's oh, literally he he's doing both yeah he's back in the oh, algs okay yeah oh, that's good. but he initially he did he left the algs and then i think he probably saw some of the writing on the wall and was like oh, i don't want to put myself in I a corner to here to something that's going to do that yeah and i know phase hasn't been putting uh it hasn't been like landing in like super hot awesome locations either in terms of performance too mm-hmm. so yeah cloud nine right now is absolutely decimating i will say though Pro League for Halo has been top It's amazing. Notch. Yeah, very good. Amazing. Like, and it sucks that though, even at this point, even the, the pro players are like saying like hey, this game is kind of really like upset. You know, doo-doo right now. Yeah. But I I do I often think that the pro players are like really bad ambassadors for like any game because they're mm-hmm. always the ones that cry the most. I I'm so sick. I, I mean, it's I've been a part of the hold Apex on, community. Hold on. Give me one second. I I just got it. It's like so Give me
Sorry about that, man. Mom. Mom's going through some stuff right now. Uh oh. Are yeah. you alright? Yeah, she's it's all good. Like just just family. Yeah. Um, all right. So what I was gonna say before we talk about the Halo TV show real quick is uh I I get generally I get really sick. I, I'm I'm all for content creators speaking their mind and pros speaking their mind. And I know people that invested in a game are going to speak their mind and have a pit strong opinions. But I get so sick of the nonstop just just crocodile tears. Just like they, they cry, especially in the Apex community, they cry about everything. And like one of my favorite recent examples is like all the pros have been um, complaining about the Apex rank system, complaining, 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 saying that it favors kills too much and that all the players are just rushing to kill each other and that it ruins the game. So this season, Respawn lowered the kill cap. Uh, and I always said, well, if people aren't incentivized to fight, then they're just going to it's going to become everybody's hiding late game. Nobody wants to fight and it just becomes a game of hide and seek. Well, lo and behold, Respawn changed the rank system this this season. And now the pros are all complaining that there's a lot of players that aren't very good in the high ranks because all they're doing is hiding until the end of the game. And it's like, you literally just asked for this. Like, you literally begged for this. And then Respawn responds and it's like, oh my God. It's like, it's just, you can't please some of these people. I get, I get so sick of it. Like, at least be consistent. At least be consistent. Be consistent, for sure. For sure, consistent. I mean, like, whenever it comes to Halo, I know, like, a lot of people will kind of, like, a lot of, like, community will, like, really, like, beat the hell out of, like, pro players whenever they yeah. have, like, any kind of opinion. Uh, for Halo in particular, I know, like, the mangler is, like, clearly, like, the number one topic whenever it comes to competitiveness. Yeah. Personally, I think it is a busted weapon, and I think that the maps need to, like, really figure out how they're favoring it. So, like, for example, live fire. Mangler spawns on one side of the map, doesn't spawn mm -hmm. on the other side of the map. That kind of yeah. balance needs to be figured out. Yeah. Um, and, like, in this case, it can be rectified if you want to keep the Mangler at the exact same, like, weights used. But then, like, as soon as, like, the niche pro player, who quite literally has had no, like, any kind of, like, interaction or engagement with how this game is developed, is saying like hey this is like really bad for competitive at least from my side people like freaking lose their minds or is like oh pro player with an opinion and it's just like look i get it like you don't get paid to make money the same way these guys like you don't yeah. get you don't play to make money the same way these guys do and it's just like i get that tuning can absolutely play a part in this right you know maybe because all these teams do is just scrim against each other every yeah. single day anyways like yeah. that's what they're doing they're they're not really going into ranks uh no. playing the, the same exact game so it's just like that's where their complaints are at and like pro players in halo are so bad at being personalities that's, like see, i think the best personality is probably snipe down because yeah. he's just a normal guy he gets it he knows yeah. how to talk versus like every other pro is just boomer they're that's, all boomers that's part of it too like like and not just in halo you have to know how to say something i th i think like because as a pro like or even as a prominent streamer you have to understand that you are an ambassador whether whether you like it or not like for for any given game that you are playing you know people are listening to you and I, and I just get so sick of the constant like Oh my god, this game's terrible. This is trash. This game's dead. It's broken because of this or that. And it's like, like you said, there's a the way this the way that you structured your sentence, I know it's not like as hot of a take, but like the way you just said, like, you know, like the mangler, it's like it's not really healthy for competitive play, and this is why. Blah blah. I'm totally cool with that. Like that's that's a valid, yeah. that's a critique. That's that's feedback. I'm good. You know, I'm not saying you should suppress your opinion. I just get so sick of the nonstop like tweets, like, oh my god, this game sucks so bad that I'm only yeah. playing it for 16 hours a day now. And you know, like, well, there must be something you like about it because <laughs> you're, you're playing it for a full time job. You know, like like you know like at least yeah. acknowledge that level of you know i love i, I love this game pro, pro, most pro players don't really know how to humble themselves no especially for like halo players because some of them have been playing for like almost decades now almost like yeah. almost 20 years yeah, of like literally. Halo they've been playing so like again like i said earlier like halo pro players are boomers and i saw uh daisho over here talking about new blood there's actually been some pretty cool stuff in here you know Especially whenever it comes to from Halo Five players, you know, there's been a lot of young competitive Halo Five players now entering the Halo Infinite scene, 
And it's really great. Like seeing Penguin, but pretty much seeing the entire like Cloud Nine roster is actually been really cool. But Penguin in particular is like a great example of it. I, th- I believe he's like barely even like twenty. Um, but um, you know, it's 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 interesting to see how the how the game evolves. And Halo is in a desperate need of just like content and just doing more with it. But it also really needs to like culturally figure itself out on who. Yeah. who actually likes their game because you know what's I'll tell you right now snipe down is not going to be able to hold out for it forever no and you know what's really funny is um splitgate has uh it definitely has like some halo boomers that co- that compete in its pro league as well but there's a lot of really young kids that play that game like i'm talking like 16 17 18 years old that play it professionally at mm-hmm. a really high level and i find that really interesting that that like that weird like because I mean, it is totally different from Halo in a sense. The time to kill is like one quarter of what Halo is, and portaling mm-hmm. totally changes the movement and stuff. But um, I don't know. It's just really interesting to me that um, you know some of these really like young kids found this you know pretty pretty niche game, uh, especially at the start, and um, you know just just clung to it. And, and it's weird that i think when halo infinite first came out it was getting a lot of those kids and now it's kind of back to the the core because of the lack of content it's back to the core boomers like you and i who've been playing it for 20 years and we we need to get those kids back because it's healthy for the game and you know doc said it and you know every halo redditor in the world hated him for it but he was like this game's gonna last two weeks yeah and it's it's gone uh, hey, and it I lasted two months was, it, it lasted two months like, <laughs> it lasted two months but you know he technically wasn't wrong because uh you know he saw it and he was like look the game well, look the game's fine he's like it plays great but he's just like there's a severe lack of content i he called that's it. that's the problem I, I i think it's not that there's anything I, the game doesn't require a battle royale that's not the problem is it requires a consistent content pipeline I, and i will i will love battle royale i'm not saying that it you know requires it i guess yeah i'm just I'm i will, I will be there freaking day zero playing it non-stop i would love it um i just think that if they launch this game without a battle royale for a year or two years but we're putting out like significant content every month it totally would be fine mm-hmm. and then well, i'm gonna i'm gonna end it like with my last piece here it's just like it really sucks to see this very quiet 343 again it's just like yeah, I know. what happened post mcc it's just like they launched their game they know that it's, there's something wrong with it, and they don't say anything. I really do appreciate whatever they do. I think they go a little bit more over the top, but I, but I feel like it's just fluff. When they because, do speak, it's good, but yeah, they don't do it, it enough. They, they don't do it enough, and they don't answer like a question people questions people care about. Like yeah. I remember they talked a little bit more about like the networking and like how desync works and stuff like that. Yeah, having an engineer like write a blog post is like diamonds, honestly yeah. to me. So someone who actually can rep like who can turn their vocabulary into just easy understandable digestible information mm-hmm. for me who does not know anything about coding who does not know anything about developing all that type of network stuff like that stuff is cool but there's no follow-up until like hey this is what we're really trying to do that they he talked about like we want to rectify this and it's like cool yeah I'm glad you realize that there's an issue but like when is that going to happen i um i i mean i don't know I'm not going to put it all on one person. I, I was going to say something. I'm, I'm not going to, I guess. <laughs> I, I, whatever the, one of the main people whose job that is is sketch They're the community manager. Mm-hmm. And he, he used to post on a forum. He started as literally as a forum member, like who talked about Halo all the time on a forum that I belong to myself, not even a Halo forum, a general, this community gaming community forum. And every time I hear him talk, he asks, because they do that they do that thing a lot of times where he is the one interviewing like other members of the team mm-hmm. and i'm sure it's it's probably not his fault it's an agreement you know this is what you're going to talk about blah 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 and he i i, I hate to say because he very well may be in the background screaming hey hey no we got to talk about this we got to talk about this i hate to like fault him but he asks the most like softball like like he takes on topics that are not like they're not really answering like you said they're not really answering anybody's questions and it very well may not be his fault that would that's what they're communicating mm-hmm. but when he talks i just feel like i'm like this is nice but this is not what i wanted to hear about like this is like, yeah. I, like I don't know if they just don't get have the pulse of the community very well or if they hear it and they're just like ah we'll get there but it's not today yeah. you know i don't know 
whenever whenever Halo Infinite was like just about to come out, they were doing developer like streams of it. Yeah, and it would only be like maybe thirty five like for an hour minute long. Um, like they were great, and I can understand that you can't just be on a stream as a community manager and with a developer to just like talk building a video game about like the actual source code and all that all that labor that goes to it. How do you regurgitate that information to something positive? And it felt like now that I look back at it, just a lot of stuff that they really wanted to just confirm with the community that like, hey, we're going back to old Halo style. We're going back to mm-hmm. the bungee kind of, you know, approach to this. It sounded like they just really were hitting trying to hit check marks of beats yeah. that they knew that they needed to hit. And like we've all accepted the fact that they've hit the beats, if not near perfectly. You know, we know we see that there's yeah. obvious changes in there, but like positively speaking, fundamentally, like the Halo Infinite is a good game, but yeah. now it's just like, okay, you've only planned for the beats. You're not gonna talk about anything else now. That's yeah. pretty much what it feels like in terms of their roadmap and commu- of communication. It and feels... I don't think it's um I don't even think it's um what's his name anymore? I think it's Beauty Shack who's community manager now. I it could be, I don't know. I, I don't know what Sketch's position is anymore, but um do you want to talk about th- I don't know. <laughs> so I guess I'll, I guess I'll say this. There's a new trailer out for the Halo TV show and oh, the, yeah? re- the reviews of the first two episodes are out. I don't think Jade I had time to look at the reviews. Did you? I I did not have time, but I did watch the trailer before okay. this because I was not caught up on it actually. Okay. So I mean it came out like literally 15 minutes before our show. So um, for for the viewers right now just so that way they know i really i love halo so much like it's like my favorite game franchise of all time i've been playing halo ce since i was nine. same same and on the original xbox i love this franchise so much i would die on a hill for this franchise but i will tell you right now i will never even look back at the hill for the halo tv show i want <laughs> this to fail so bad the reviews <laughs> of the first so, well I, I i i read some of the reviews of the first two episodes and the best one the best review was like, eh, um, Master Chief is very good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was the best thing that they could say. They were like, it's boring, uneven, bad, poorly paced. Uh, the other characters are bad. Uh, just, uh, but Master Chief is like, like, um, like said that the actor and like his portrayal and stuff is really good. But I, okay, I, I when I watch, listen to the trailers, I, I don't. Know, I'm probably being nitpicky. But they're making it sound like Master Chief is like, like omnipotent, like 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 he he knows everything. Like he keep that you keep hearing these quotes, like, you know, like I can feel something inside me, and if you find the Halo, we will win the war. And it's like that's not really not how Halo happened. We kind of like stumbled upon it, and like it set off this catastrophic series of events, you know. And, and like Master Chief yeah. is very much the hero, but they're making him sound like he's like driving the entire show yeah and and he does but not in that manner you know like i don't know well, it's, i'm just so scared i'm i'm i know i'm gonna I, watch it and i'm gonna cringe through every moment of it <laughs> but i'm still gonna do it for the final trailer i mean like i think i had the goosebumps for it whenever we saw chief drop out of the pelican and onto what is presumably the halo ring or presumably like one of the plant like one of the colonies planets that he's going on like that didn't that felt help that felt halo to me actually because we know chief is capable of literally just jumping out of any kind of orbital space from I mean, any the opening of halo 3 right going. where he's like he, he's made that big yeah. crater in the ground and sarge is waking him up <laughs> yeah like we know he's capable of this kind of stuff too so it's just like that felt as much halo as it could be but as i was like watching it you know i'm looking at a lot of things and trying to dissect it as less as i can as not just like as somebody who wants to see it fail but trying to dissect it as like what does this halo mean to me yeah whenever i look at this and it's just like nothing nothing that felt halo to me no like more particularly you know we see you know catherine and um keys and not the political correct side of thing with catherine and keys but they're young as hell they're not in the middle ages or anything like yeah. that like they're young they're like yeah. 20 30 it just I doesn't mean, make sense Halsey's kind of like the mother figure like of uh, 
of the of the Spartans, you know, not the same age, yeah. not the same age. But like even like even other things that just came up, like we see um that little town where the Chevy Tahoe is at, we just see like elites <laughs> walking in. I love how you just like randomly right just said a little town where the Chevy Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> Tahoe and the AK forty sevens. Yeah. No, like you just see these elites just like scrolling in, like they're just like going to like go into the, like a first watch to get a table dude yeah they're strolling in but like we know how the covenant actually like break through any kind of like gate any kind of door in front of them they go in grunts and jackals first and then elites come in running in and here they're just taking a stroll yeah and then lastly they're missing nothing. all like the flavor bits big time and the and the biggest flavor i think that really like hurts and cripples us the most is going to be the uh the environments the yeah. the entire atmosphere of it the the flavors the atmosphere that one city looks was... more like the matrix than it does halo yes yes it looked more like mass effect it looked yeah. more like it didn't feel halo it didn't have the um ridley scott vision that i really was so flavored from the original halo trilogy that just it felt very war like poorly put together the thing that kills me the most about it, I think, is like, I could watch it probably and be like, all right, it's not very good, and that's that. But what kills me about it is there's going to be a lot of people who aren't like huge gamers. Maybe they are, but they don't play Halo. Uh, and they know, like, I'm a huge Halo fan. They're going to watch this show and they're going to be like, oh, so that's what Halo is. And I'm going to be like, no! <laughs> I'm going to like freak out. You know, they're, they're, so they're going to be like, that's what you were so, that's what you loved so much for the past, you know, 20 years. And I'm like, no, no, it's not. Please don't say that. You know, like, it's really better. I swear. I swear it's not like that in my my real world over here where we have real yeah. Halo. You know, like, that's what's frustrating. It's going to be people this who are going to watch it. It'll be their first, it'll be their first exposure to Halo. And it will it's, likely it's not be good. Star Wars prequel. Prequel yes. all over again. Except I guess that still did gangbusters, so whatever. No. Oh man. Well let's, let's, here's let's... To hoping that like <laughs> I'm not as disappointed as I'm hoping I will Me be. Me too. Me too. Hopefully it at least has its moments, you know. Um so let's go to another Xbox franchise. Uh it seems that the Gears of War, and I know you're a big Gears guy, and I am too, but you're, you are in a different way than I am, I think. Um, it seems that the Gears of War movie is moving forward. Like, the producer who was attached to this project when I got announced, I think I looked back, it was 2007, I think. It was something like that, like, way long time. Maybe it was 2013. Mm -hmm. That's when 2013. Seven years. Yeah, the producer was like on a comedy show. We're gonna hear news he, about it soon. Like that's what he said. Like yeah. we're actually gonna hear news. And like, I don't, what what would you hope for from a Gears of War movie at this point? I would hope for an E Day uh, prequel to Gears One. Like I don't want to see Gears actual One prequel? replicated. Yeah, yeah, actual prequel. I want to see the Locust rise for the first time. We only ever get to see it. That would be in cool. Just, like short cinematics. I think that's the perfect way to introduce it without trying to like really get super deep into like this is gears of war you know i think tout storytelling is the hardest part uh in the past that gears has and we've seen that even in the original trilogy like we know that the pendulum wars was a thing and the entire like years five goes a little bit deeper into that too whenever it comes to like the 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 war that they had specifically too i, I don't know too much about it i didn't read too much of the books but Something that's like a prequel to the first Gears would be great for E Day. I love really that. Learning idea. a little bit more about Marcus's dad too, and even Myra, because at this point we know Myra was spoilers for anybody who didn't play Gears Five. Myra was abducted as a child, and she was experimented on, and she ended up becoming the actual queen of the Locust through lots of I different. I played crazy... Gears Five, and I somehow can't remember any of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there there was um there was like. Uh, collectible items that you read and you go mm, through and that's probably why i don't gears read jack. as much as yeah it, gears 2 did the same thing where you can kind of get context for the items that you pick up from the game like it was honestly gears 5 was perfect for that because we got to go back to um that location and yeah. learn a little bit about era um so we learned so much and it'd be great for the fans to get to see that i mean we've technically had that with gears tactics but a lot of people really did skip on gears tactics realistically no matter I how play that game, game i i I'm not um, 
like a tactics kind of guy but that game i loved gears enough and that game looked cool enough to, to kind of yeah. i think put me over the top i haven't played it yet but yeah, me either but nothing is detrimental to the story like it's just here's here's gears and the tactics game and here is the story's uh, not integral at all i think his name is akon <laughs> right. i don't know the, the boss of that i don't know but you know it's not super integral we know that it's kate's dad that you mm. play as so i mean that's, that's kind of that. cool and then like the game actually had a book that came out afterwards where it takes place after gears 5 where kate and her dad actually get i've heard the gears books they, suck i think they're pretty decent actually you think they're decent you know, they're, I might get, maybe i'll get them on the audible same level of halo yeah, not the some same level of, of Halo. Some of the Halo books are pretty good, I think. Yeah, no, they really are. Like, I think the Forerunner Saga, the trilogy, is like really great. But yeah, you know, I've never really cared much for about Gears books. I always loved the storytelling that it took with at least the original Gears trilogy. Really liked where they were going with four, but wasn't a big fan of five. I'm still confused. It, it was kind of hinted. Maybe you can clarify this for me. It was kind of hinted that Kate had like some type of like locust, not locust, whatever you want to call what the hell do they call it now they're, they're locusts yeah oh it's swarm swarm okay uh, like, yeah, so, like I mean, powers she, or something and then like i feel like that plot point like got dropped like the whole rest of the game after that like i didn't hear any more about it that's what gears always does is that they pick up on something and they just like ignore it but no uh kate is a direct descendant of mira so she has some what of, does that mean you know that means that she has some sort of control over communicating and, and okay. seeing through the eyes of the swarm. Doesn't she like mind mom, control one of them at one point? Don't yeah, you like play yeah. as a locust or swarm? Uh, yeah, yeah. You play as one of the that. swarm swarm drones and you switch between them uh, right whenever your uncle's killed or her uncle's killed. Um, but yeah, yeah, she has control over that, and that's what you know kind of gave us a little bit more insight into like how does the science and how does like. I don't want to call it magic. Uh, it's not magic, but they got they got some like, like genetic tech on um, Titan shit going on. Yeah, that's the best way to explain it. <laughs> um, I think, but yeah, I think I mean, like, they've really got to bring back Ice T. That's what they. You know what? They better really yet, do. if they make a Gears of War movie, they better cast Ice T somewhere in that cast. movie. No, it'd be perfect because he was the top. He was at the top of the world with the entire emotion. Uh, <laughs> uh, trading and everything like that. Like he was a leader in selling that. <laughs> oh and he had man. Nothing. I'm down. Oh, Gears 3 was such a good game, man. All, I, I, um, I love all the Gears games, really. Yeah. Well, I really didn't like 5. I think I've expressed it already. It's just, I do. 5 was such a weird game. I tried explaining to my a friend of mine who used to play Gears with me back in the day that, like, um, he played Gears 1 with, like, relentlessly with me. Um, and, like, I don't think he's played it since. And, like, I was, try I was trying to explain to get him to play, come play Gears 5 with me. I'm like, dude, it's on Game Pass. Like, just just try it, you know, just try it, just try it. And like, I was explaining something to him and he's like, so wait, it's not like Warzone anymore. Like the, the just one death per round. Remember how that's what Gears of War one was is one death per mm -hmm. round multiplayer. I was like, no, no dude, man. that's, no, that's like, um, yeah. that's like not even in the game. And he's, and he's like, what? He's like, I'm not playing it then. <laughs> that was All the right. point of Gears, man. <laughs> Whatever. That really was. People love that. People complained about that for the longest time that it was the Gears stuff. I don't know if it's in there anymore, but. No, um, I, I know the mode. It's not. Uh, I can't think of what it is right now. But like, people love multiplayer gears. Um, that like the fact that that mode was out of it like has really like been a bad note. But I I've, I've heard a lot of like internal like not internal but like inside stuff going on. And uh, even um, he follows me on Twitter, which is pretty cool. Well, uh, Fudge, I forgot his name. Nice team. Um, he's in charge of like the, the media franchise. Guy Welsh is his name actually. Um, uh, Guy Welsh, not Welsh. Uh, he's in charge of, I believe, like the marketing and uh, of Gears with Xbox. So he's kind of an OG. He's been doing it since I believe Gears One. Mm -hmm. um, and he replied to somebody. He goes, "We know we missed the mark with Gears Five. We're, we're going back to mm -hmm. trying to figure out how we can bring that original trilogy back to life." Mm -hmm. And I really hope that, like, with the movie, you know, if they introduce like the E Day stuff, when we learn more about Marcus, we learn more about the rest mm -hmm. of Delta Squad and where they've been. Um, that will give Coalition a lot more interest in returning back to Delta Squad with Marcus being the main ca uh, main character, but still being able to tell other people's stories. So Kate, you know, Dell's Dell. I'm pretty sure Dell's going to be dead. I'm pretty sure JD's still going to be alive. Yeah, but I'm pretty so. sure Kate that, and JD that will whole can, option can at the end down. there threw, threw me off so much. That was really weird. Yeah, because I just don't know how they're going to move forward from that. 
Like I, I, I it, 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 I'm not saying that it was like a bad thought per se, but mm-hmm. it's just like okay, you offered players a choice all of a sudden that you're really most likely only going to be able to move forward with 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 one of these. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm I'm pretty sure you're right. It'll be Dell because frankly, Dell just holds less value to the franchise than JD, but. I really, I really he's a like Dell though. In Gears no, he's 4. a great no, character. No, he's a great character in Gears Four. Didn't really care about him in Gears Five. Like Gears Four, like the whole trio dynamic between Dell, Kate, and JD was like really refreshing. It felt yeah. very Gears, felt very Gearsy. Yeah. Uh, Baird was always my go-to. I love Baird. Constantly. Oh, one hundred percent. I was a Baird guy. Um, yeah. He looked like right. he'd be a Baird guy. A Baird guy. <laughs> uh, I I always quoted Baird all the time. Um, all right, I gotta put you on the spot, and I need you to explain something to me. Okay. This Attack on Titan 100 Thieves collab. I know you're a fan of both. What? What? I, I don't understand how this is a collaboration. Obviously, it's hotcakes. But what did 100 Thieves do? They didn't do anything. They printed some shirts. Like, I, I, don't I mean, get isn't it. that any collaboration for the most part? No, um, that's what I'm saying. It's not a collaboration. <laughs> It's marketing, so, um, and it's brilliant I was, marketing. I was watching Nade Shot on his stream, and it, it really is just marketing at this point. And he said that this collaboration is something that is personal to him. Like, he mm-hmm. loves anime. He loves yeah. Attack on Titan. So he's just like, I literally can do whatever I want. So yeah, the I branding is this. great. The branding's great. The problem, I think, that it is right now with this drop specifically is that it's very mid. And I mean that in the sense that, like, this drop is not the coolest ever, despite how cool of a collaboration effort it is, because they actually did work um, with the studios Mm -hmm. and the creator of Attack on Titan to make this drop happen, because it is official, and that's what makes it important. And I think that's probably what's missed here, is, like, what is the collaboration effort besides a marketing piece? Is that an esports organization works directly with one of the biggest, if not the most historical animes Mm -hmm. ever um and to put that on their business their hoodie business like the very lucrative business that it is for their hoodies it means a lot like you can literally go to like stockx.com and like see these hoodies that were like 60 bucks be listed for almost 500 Mm dollars like i probably have almost like three thousand worth of hoodies right now on this rack so i don't know if i want to say this i feel like (laughs) i'm really good (laughs) I don't mean to be. A, I really don't Just mean to be offen- I don't mean to be offensive. You, it's you, fine. You, you said this drop was was mid, and yeah. and I I I looked at the stuff and it, it was okay. I and I know I know 100 Thieves has a very lucrative clothing business, and I think it's brilliant. I think it's great. I think it's great branding. They've got something that works for them, and I'm not one of those people that like bashes them like all oh, hoodie org. You know, like no. They, I, a they have professional esports teams. B, I don't care. You do whatever works for you, and that's how you build a successful business. And they obviously have a model, and it works. Mm -hmm. Uh, No disrespect there. Uh, Nothing but respect. But in all my time of looking at 100 Thieves, I have never seen a single hoodie that I was like, man, I think I want that. Like, never. And and, and I I, I don't know, like, because I kind of want one. I kind of want to be like, oh, that's the one for me. You know what I mean? Like, snatch it up. Because I'm not a big hoodie guy in general, but when I saw this Attack on Titan one, I was like, oh, maybe this is the one, you know? And I looked at it and I was like, eh, maybe not. At this point, at this point, owning 100 Thieves gear is a very, very rare commodity. Street they do cred. not reprint. It's street cred. They do not reprint. They do not remake. That's what the point of the Foundations line that they have that's constantly being remade and re- rebuilt is to allow those people who want to be a part of the community, who want to represent, be in that position. Mm-hmm. But these drops are so stupid limited dude like i don't know how much they make i really don't i remember i bought almost like 300 dollars with how much do they cost like msrp like like base price when they drop these things it's always different it's always different i couldn't tell you what the average is i want to say the the average honestly if i had to guess it would be usually between 60 to 80 dollars okay that's not bad and they even nade was talking about it and this is why i respect nade nade's a he's a stand-up guy you know he'll tell you as it is and he doesn't yeah, he, he doesn't hold back anything specifically. Um, and he tells it in a way that gamers can understand it because gamers genuinely don't understand almost anything by <laughs> how smart they are at the video game itself. 
but um you know he goes down into you know breaking down like we have very limited resources on actually creating the fabrics we have like so many swatches to choose from and distribution becomes a pay, like becomes an effort too so he goes we don't get the opportunity to do stuff like this all the time yeah so whenever it comes to the value of these hoodies and how they're made and what they're sold at msrp you're, you're gonna get different prices all the time like i remember i bought one hoodie for maybe like 60 bucks and then i bought another hoodie for like 80 bucks so i heard they're gonna get out of the hoodie is, business and do nfts instead I, I i'd imagine they do both they already have an nft <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm kidding i'm kidding um but for my comment about the mid right i say mid and it's not their fault because he said that when they were talking and discussing they have to be consistent about the with the branding the hoodies, uh no like in every with, business with the, with the attack on titan like branding i mean no it wasn't about that it was more about what was available to them in the in the resources that they had with designs mm. so every business does this where they're just going to have a back pool of this like designs that they mm -hmm. could sell off to anybody yeah. that's interested and you know that nate was just like this is what they had and he's like i think that fits well with the 100 okay. thieves brand yeah. and i agree but it really sucks because there's a lot of opportunity with it they could have done with like different designs i get it you know maybe it was too expensive for them maybe it wasn't within their their scope of their bandwidth to just request new designs because yeah. i bought i bought this not a hoodie actually i bought a butt a zip up or a button up which one of the two and i bought the wrong freaking one too i was supposed to buy the air uh, the the levi one and i bought the aaron one like an idiot but uh that was like a hundred and like you genocide um, supporting scum yeah oh no it's levi no no the jaeger oh Aaron. What do you mean side supporting? He's like the main guy right now. I would have loved to have like I said adult genocide Aaron. supporting. Okay. Well, the designs were eh for the most part. I will agree with that, but you can't miss out on this drop. This one, it's a, it's historical. Like if you're if you have one of these things, you're probably gonna be able to brag about it. I should have resold. I should have got one and resold it. Go to. So I should have traded it for a thirty eighty. So I should have done. You probably could, to be honest. <laughs> All right. If you could have got your hands on one. Uh, Snoop also signed with FaZe. I got nothing else to say about that other than it's worth noting. Just just as a cultural moment. We're talking Snoop yeah. signing with a gaming org. And he actually changed his name on Twitter to FaZe Snoop. Like, that's pretty amazing. Um, LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron James. Yeah, that, you've seen that meme, right? It's James, it's James Autumn. Not LeBron James. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Uh, I hope you've seen the LeBron James meme though. The the kid. LeBron James. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was gonna talk about Warcraft, but I don't really know if I feel feel like it. Uh, the next you World of Warcraft expansion. Warcraft. You don't? I don't know anything about. I don't know anything about WoW. Okay. Well, here's what you should know. The next World of Warcraft expansion <laughs> is being revealed in April. And a new Warcraft mobile game is being revealed in May. So, first time ever the franchise will be on mobile. And I think it's actually, it's been in development for a long, long, long time. So, it's going to be a gacha game. Oh, it's going to be just like, it's going to be just like Genshin it's gonna Impact. Be, it's going to be, no, I think it's going to be like Clash of Clans. Like Warcraft RTS, but like, oh, okay. you know, like that kind of thing. That's a good so, idea. So, this is, again, this is going to be one of those... The fans ask for something, they get it, and then they're going to cry. Because they've been asking for a new Warcraft RTS for now, you know, like 20 years. And they're going to give it to them in a, in a mobile you, game. Brought, you brought this up whenever we were discussing the acquisition. You're just like, yeah, yeah. they got a mobile game. And it's just like, if they make another game that's RTS, I hope it goes yeah. to not PC. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so here's what's releasing this week and next. Uh, GTA 5 comes the next gen. WWE 2 K22 for anybody who still cares. Tunic, which I know Jedi is excited yeah. for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin, which is kind of like a big oxymoron, Dude. I think. I don't know. Are you it's excited the, that for that? Game, or? I'm actually interested because of the memes. It's, 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 it's Team been, Ninja. Like, it's so bizarre. Yeah. I've, I've been liking everything that I see. Like, there's this one, like, clip within the demo where it's just like this this guy, like the main character Jack is just walking down, going up this like about to go up these steps, and he's got two people following him, and he just like turns around. And then they just they're just like, Yeah, we have rocks too. 
He's like, I have to go kill them. We have to go kill them. And they're like, we're with you. That there's, was their first time meeting, and they just fist bumped like they were just like bros. There's like, a the old. there's a a scene where uh one of the characters' phones goes off, and it's his ringtone is Limp Biscuit. Like it's it's <laughs> so, but it it it's really crazy. I'm kind of glad it got made. Uh, I'm not a Final Fantasy fan, but it's an alternate universe retelling of the original Final Fantasy game made yeah. by Team Ninja. And I feel like Ninja Team Ninja of like Ninja Gaiden and Dead or Alive fame. I feel like this is one of those things where like it's like it's like rejected like ideas, and then somebody goes into that pile of rejected ideas and just like picks something out, and they're like, "We're doing this one," you know, <laughs> like <laughs> we're gonna remake the original Final Fantasy game, but in an alternate yeah. universe made by an action game developer. <laughs> right. Um, James, James brought up a good point. I was about to mention it too. It's just like, yeah, the, it's gotten some interesting reviews so far. Oh, I mean, how about like Metacritic? I feel like the the core Final Fantasy fans are gonna hate it. That's what I mean. Like, like it's such like a I bizarre idea. Like it, actually, I think the core Final Fantasy fans are gonna like it. I don't it know because cause they're gonna be like, "Wow, well, they did. They made it a joke. They just made it about memes and blah 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 blah." I don't know. I, I mean, you'd be surprised who the new Final Fantasy crowd is, to be honest. That's like, true. You're gonna have like the the Old Testament Final Fantasy fans who might be like that, but yeah, you know, the most content people have been getting that are Final Fantasy fans has been Final Fantasy fourteen, and yeah. it's an online They'll be game. Okay with it, you probably. Have, you have no choice but to be a meme on there. Isn't it kind of funny though? And I, I don't know. I, I kind of want to play it just because. My I, PS5 I, is like boxed up right now, and I'm thinking about just unboxing it to go put it up. I, in like, I just my think TV it's funny that it. like somebody at Square decided that it's time to remake Final Fantasy like from the beginning. You know, like Final Fantasy One, because most people haven't played it, and and it, but in order to accomplish that, they're like, yeah, man, we're gonna mix in Limp Biscuit and fist bumps, <laughs> and uh, you know, like, we're gonna have like the Ninja Gaiden guys do it. It's just so funny to me that they didn't try to make it like uber serious, you know, like 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 the Final Fantasy seven remakes, you know, like uh, I, I'm surprised and, and I'm not really complaining because it's nice to see Square um, kind of flash some personality um, and but, finally put out content that's not horrible. Yeah, because Besides Guardians of the Galaxy, they, really. they, they announced like four games at that PlayStation state of play and like all four looked like complete garbage. So they really did. Well, they also <laughs> had. um. It's not a Final Fantasy game, I, but it's clearly like a. I, I, I have to I have to say this, James, you are okay. not being judged, dude, because Limp Biscuit was my favorite band in middle school. And I went to a Limp Biscuit concert in my 20s and I listened to their most recent album that came out this year. So you are not being judged. I stand with my fellow new metal teenagers from the 2000 years. Oh, Limp Biscuit was great. Thought I would let anybody tell you different. I'm um, not gonna lie. I know I've heard Limp Biscuit, but I actually can't think of like. You would hear. You would recognize some of them. I would recognize, yeah. No, I would. I just don't know the names. They had some anthems back in the day. Nookie, break stuff. You would. You would know them. Like a cover of like something. Blue eyes. Behind Blue Eyes was one of their later. Behind Blue Eyes. Later years okay. covers. Yeah. That was a remake of a of a, a of a Who the, song. That was a cover. The who. Yeah. The Who. Yeah, okay. That was the hit. like the sixties. The original is really good. Um, all right, now we've got "Don't Miss It." I'm gonna go first because I had the old game, and I don't know if I gave you a heads up. You're doing the upcoming game, so I'm gonna you give know, you. I was 60 assuming seconds. it the whole time. I was, I was like, I know what my new game is. If he freaking like gives me the the turnaround on an on old game, I'm gonna tell him you better find a new game or old <laughs> game, dude. I got old this week. Um. So my my old game that people shouldn't miss out on, I don't know if you've played this one or not, but uh, you totally should, is Res from Sega. It's like a trippy, I think it originally came out on the Dreamcast, trippy like uh, shooter, R-E-Z. Uh, and they re-released it recently in, in, by the name Res Infinite. Um, just really weird, bizarre, uh, trippy, kind of like arcadey like shooter, but also slash rhythm game. And you can finish the whole Musical game. Musical rail shooter. Yeah. You can finish the whole game in probably like 30 to 60 minutes. You can probably get it for like, I don't know, 10 bucks. Uh, it's just it's just one of those really like puts you in like a trance state type game. The music is really good. It's really creative. The art, uh, psychedelic. Um, 
that you should check it out uh it was tough tough on the eyes yeah i can see that i can see that it's definitely a visual smorgasbord but uh check it out res res infinite however you can play it you totally should everybody should play it okay res i'll take a look at it it's on steam res infinite is yes Res infinite is Steam. okay i think it's just like an hd version of the original okay well the game that i'm choosing um only because i'm coming fresh off of watching it in movies it was a really great movie the batman uh gotham knights is mm. now coming out this year actually when and, does it come out do you know uh i believe it was in september let me double Ball? check here okay but, that's good enough uh gotham knights release date october 25th 2022 okay um and it's interesting because the movie came out. I didn't watch it yet, but after the movie came out, then they announced that Gotham Knights was coming out later this year because it had been delayed. It was supposed to come out last year. Um, but I'm a big, big, big fan of the Arkham series. Um, back on like you know past gen console, it's definitely a staple in like brawler games. Um, I've absolutely fell in love with the storytelling that they did with those games. It felt great, felt authentic, authentic. And despite all the issues Arkham Knight had, I still loved it. Um, and Gotham Knights is a definite like step back away from it, but you know, we're going into a lot of deeper uh Batman lore, uh, Gotham lore because it's going to be the Court of Owls. And if you're not familiar with the Court of Owls, um, and I don't read comics, I just know what's being told to me through like podcasts. The uh, Court of Owls is going to be the biggest like underground criminal organization that literally makes Gotham. Like work the way that I think it does. they're a little bit like the Illuminati. I haven't read that. They're arc. literally the Illuminati of Batman. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um. So I'm really excited to see what happens. Even though we don't have Batman in this one, I, I think it's really think great that actually way expanding in. out into like three other characters, like Red Hood, uh, Robin, and as well as uh, Batgirl. Um. During whenever Arkham City came out, I thought that that game had such great character development and storytelling for just not Batman. Yeah. Um, so the I'm really interested to such. see what they can do. Whenever we play, whenever I got to play as Catwoman in Arkham City, I, I was like, "Dude, this is cool as hell." She's I got still, such a voice actress. Screen. I think one of the big twists in Gotham Knights is gonna be like, and I don't know if they'll do it at the very end or they'll do it in DLC or whatever. I think it's gonna be the twist is gonna be that Batman is still alive and then he's gonna become a playable character. Speculation, total speculation. Total speculation. Well, it's not Rocksteady who's making this game. It's the same team who made. Um, Batman Origins, Arkham yeah. Origins. Uh, so, Rocksteady's doing Suicide Squad. They are. And the gameplay from that looked pretty decent, actually. I liked what I saw. Even after watching those, uh, the James Gunn Suicide Squad, which I love. Um, yeah, it was good. King Shark yeah. for the win. Yeah, Team Shark. <laughs> uh, I'm really stoked for it. So, Gotham Knights. Um, check it out if, on gameplay if you haven't. It's going to be super awesome. I was always a big fan of, uh, of uh, some of the other... Like Nightwing is a good character. Uh, Jason not Jason Todd as Red Hood is a good character, mm -hmm. and um, Tim Drake as Robin is also good. There's actually a really cool comic arc where I think it was, what was it called Battle for the Cowl, where all three of those th all those three are so Bruce has supposedly died, and all three of them are are competing to see who will become the next Batman, and they all mm -hmm. have drastically different takes on like what Batman should be. Like Jason Todd is running around on like in like a metal. Uh, like Batman suit with like dual pistols, just like shooting criminals. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> and Dick Grayson is like, of course, like flipping out at that. Like, believes in like a more traditional, like grounded Batman with like high, you know, like it's 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 interesting. Yeah. There's some there's some well, crazy hope, comic arcs out there. I hope whatever happens, we end up seeing like a good segue into Batman Beyond. I don't know if you ever watched it on the old WB. I days. didn't, but I've only heard good things. It's such a good damn show, man. Like, I absolutely loved it. I think it was such a great way to just really get away or really show, you know, uh, old Batman, you know. There was a canceled wins. Batman Beyond game somewhere in there, like not even that long ago, like within the past 10 years. Yeah, I don't have to double check. Um, but um, no, would love to see more Batman Beyond, uh, especially with like how DC... Uh, has been handling a little bit of their content, especially when it comes to like, you know, we've had the Joker, we've had Suicide Squad, we have Batman. Um, like, I hope that they kind of like internalize the reception and the positive reception that they've been getting from those games because the Jack Snyder DCU extended universe stuff is crap. He's called Jack Snyder. 
Did I call him Jack Snyder? Yes, you did. <laughs> you didn't mean to give disrespect uh, there, but you did. I mean, you meant to be yeah. disrespectful in one matter, and then you <laughs> totally did in another on top Jack. of it. Yeah. That Jack Snyder idiot can't make a movie. <laughs> yeah, the movies are jack shit. I'll, I'll say that one. 300 was um, a great movie. Uh, it was it was a good movie. And, and so was yeah. um the parody movie of 300. I don't even know what that is. Dude, it was is so it on fun. the hub or something. Fun. No, no, no. It's, oh, okay. <laughs> that's what I said. Oh, um, three. Hold on. It's a stupid. It's a really stupid pair. It's like the GG Jack Snyder. Yeah. Uh, parody. Uh, Meet the Spartans. There we go. Oh, okay. Oh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, let's see what happens. Uh, I'd also like to announce that next episode we're going to have a special guest. We're going to have Jack Snyder himself on the show to talk about his new uh, DCU game. You know what, though? Army of the Dead was terrible. That's his newest movie. That was not a good movie at all. Three hours of I total... people were super stoked for that, too. It was so boring. Three hours, way too bloated, no emotion. The action scenes weren't even good. It, it, it honestly is not a good movie in any shape. It had Batista in there, didn't it? Yeah, and they they made it. They're making like three spinoffs from it. it it's silly. Um, Badge. Oh yeah, no, no. The new Batman, I think we both like. We haven't we haven't discussed it, but um, I liked it, and Jade, I just said he thought it was amazing. So yeah, I thought it was great. They they gave. I will always say the um, Dark Knight trilogy will always be the peak that we have. And there's a lot of stuff I actually did dislike about this new Batman that don't actually... There, there's more pros than there are cons that makes you yeah. that actually make me enjoy it. But I love the new Batman. At least, I think Pattinson played a really great one. I really liked the that Transylvanian kind of look. that Colin they gave all Farrell the was amazing. Yeah. I, I think the Dark Knight is still the best one. Billy but... Kravitz was great, too. Yes. Um, I think the Dark Knight is still the best Batman movie by a hair. Uh, the Batman is a close second. I actually think that Batman Begins and the Dark Knight Rises are bad movies. I know that's a hot take, but really, the Dark I can understand Batman Begins, but Dark Knight Rises was just I thought it was so, terrible. I thought terrible. it was intelligent, honestly. terrible acting I think it did a great job. throughout the movie, terrible writing. Oh, that's I remember. That's why you made me mad. I was like, I remember Mayor had something awful. Haven't, to say haven't, to haven't you seen? Have, have you rewatched the scene where? Um, Talia dies. That's like legendary. That's like meme material. You had to. I know you've seen it. You should read. <laughs> okay, I'll send it to you later because you, you, she's she's like it's the worst worst death scene I have ever seen. She's like, like I don't know how they kept it in the movie. It must have been the only take they did or something. She's like talking Wait, for who for what? Uh, Talia, Batman's like girlfriend there. Like oh, who turned yeah, out to be the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, and Dark Knight, uh, Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, when she dies, she's like, and the end. Yeah, yeah. Like no, that's literally right. what it's, happens. Like it's a... it was pretty bad. Um, I, just, I actually remember not really liking Dark Knight Rises because of her exclusively. I thought she, like they in terms didn't... of bad acting. I think she was actually a really bad actress. Yeah. Yeah, she's good in a lot of other stuff, but th I think the casting in that movie was really bad. Anne Hathaway as Catwoman was not a good choice. I love, I just love Anne Hathaway in general. I well, will simp for that woman okay, then, until the day I die. Then I, I can't help you with that one. No, I don't need help. I'm fine. I, I mean, Tom so Hardy Anne was Hathaway. a great Bane. The, their take on Bane was very good. I, I, I think I, I, that, I like the Bane Hardy. Yeah. I, I think. I don't think that that's what they planned for the conclusion of that trilogy. I think they planned to bring Heath back for the third movie, obviously based on how they left him in the second movie. And mm. then they had to shift gears and it probably ultimately hurt the final product. But um, Dark Knight's a masterpiece. I, I would never take yeah. that away from them. Um, yeah, Colin was really, really good. And Pattinson, if you haven't watched uh, The Lighthouse with Robert Pattinson, uh, you really, really need to. Yeah. Amazing. I, I haven't seen it. It's on. It's on my radar. I've been told. You should. It's great things. Amazing. If you want to see like, like a movie just with like straight up like impressive acting performances, like insanely impressive, like the whole movie's driven by just two people's acting performances, like literally, that's that's the one. I do want to make a comment. James pointed out that uh, Pattinson made Pattinson made a fun detective Batman. I think like the whole entire detective part is what really brought me into it. Besides how 
brutal of a fighter he is, like the actual chaos that he is, and the in the force that he is in his fights. But his detectiveness uh, is what really drew me in here because we didn't see the uh, you know the fox tech that we saw in mm -hmm. um, like the like the in the, in the Bale and the Dark Knight trilogy. We saw technology that was like well way beyond anything that is else like the contact lens that records video camera like that's mind blowing um but like it wasn't so like over the top like yeah. apple is like developing the hardware uh for the stuff where it's all clean i love the grunginess i love the detectiveness that's what makes the 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 uh, arkham series so great is that mm -hmm. you're a detective you're piecing together a puzzle that was really great and riddler made that possible as a villain this take on riddler um made the detective aspect even more um and I, I really, too, I, I really liked how all of his equipment through the whole movie was very practical. Like, it explained how Batman could be Batman. Like, yeah. I'm not like, I'm not like, like, his his flying was literally just like a, a wingsuit that he whipped out, you know? And Dude, um, when he hit that, when, that when he ran underbass... down the building with that thing, it was like the hook yeah. thing there. Like, it's practical. Yeah, it was super practical and made sense. But whenever he hit that, um, yeah. that bridge. <laughs> Dude, I like jumped and like clenched my cheeks so hard. I felt that pain. I'm like, glad they put stuff like Christ. that in there, though. Mm -hmm. Best uh, bat suit oh. and Batmobile, too. Uh, I don't know if you saw Ludwig, uh, the Twitch streamer. Did you see his take on Batman? No, I heard it was a meme, but I don't know what it was. Oh, it was a meme. I hope so. I, I don't know. I know. I, I mean, I heard it like created like meme like responses. I don't know if he was no. memeing. I don't think he was memeing. I think it was a pretty genuine take. He was just like, yeah, it wasn't like Marvel at all. And like, I didn't even have to like, smile once when we're back in the joke. <laughs> I was just like, Batman Jesus, a this, joke. Is, this is what the Zack Snyder and MCU have, have done to our the, heroes. The Jack Snyder. Yeah. Who's uh, Jack? The, the, my favorite. This this is this. This makes me feel like he is the Robin in this. That meme where have you ever seen that like classic like comics uh, panel? from like i think it's like 60s batman comic where robin asks batman he's like hey batman what did your parents get you for christmas and then batman backhands robin and he screams <laughs> my parents are dead like, yeah i feel like ludwig is, I mean. is robin in that like trying to be like oh it should be fun <laughs> you know it's christmas time and then no okay all right all right I'm we sorry. gave 15 I I minutes of extra more. content so yeah you guys have a good night. Make sure you're back here next Monday at 7 o'clock Central. Jedi and I will be back. Uh, we'll see you next one. Thanks a lot for watching. Later, y'all. Peace.